Why, hello. Uh, hopefully people can uh, hear me okay. Let me know how the uh, audio volume is as well. Uh, hopefully uh, I'm audible. Alright, let me uh, keep monitoring on there. Alright, cool. Alright. Yeah, let me know how voice audio is, how uh, picture audio is, uh, or I should say uh, computer audio is. Uh, yeah, so just let me know how the uh, settings are. Spent a lot of time over the last week working on fixing all of the uh, tech issues that had uh, come up in the previous stream. Uh, so that's where uh, a lot of my time has been <laughs> since then. That and the video. Um, someone says, Frodo, show us some magic. Sure, uh, happily at some point. Okay, good. Yeah, well, hopefully the um, yeah the the tech stuff is a little bit better than uh, than last time. Okay. Um, well, hi everyone. Thanks for showing up, tuning in, etc., etc. Um, uh, maybe a little weird to do a stream on a Sunday, but I had to get the. Uh, I was thinking about streaming yesterday, um, but really was still working on the uh, on the video that came out yesterday. So hopefully that video was fun. That was definitely the uh, uh, hardest I've ever had to work on a, on a video for the channel. That thing um, took like the multiple near all-nighters before posting it. So that was, uh, yeah, that definitely took some, took some time. Uh, Jay is saying, I don't know if this is even possible, but can you do a blindfolded pharaoh? Like, can I do a pharaoh shuffle without looking? Ooh good challenge let's find out uh does that mean just the shuffle like i can certainly if i like split visually um like this i can certainly do the shuffle itself i think without looking yeah so um i can definitely do the actual shuffle uh you know without without looking at the cards um the question is uh can I do the split without looking at the cards, and can I line them up properly without looking at the cards? Uh, that is that's a good question. Let's um, let's see. All right, here goes. Um, okay, let's give this a try. Okay, so uh, yes, yeah, so that's the split live or with with vision. Um, I have to line up like that. Okay, let me give this a try. Here we go. I'm gonna look away. Um, I have to split without looking, I have to line them up without looking, shuffle without looking. Okay. All right, I guess the answer is yes. I don't know if I could do that over and over and over again, um, uh, but I can certainly hit it once. Uh, so I'll just say, yeah, woohoo, I did it. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Uh, the answer is is yes sometimes yes sometimes um alrighty so yeah good challenge I like it uh what else uh let's see um Sanad was saying uh definitely worth the wait thanks and thanks for the uh, interview the other week um Sanad uh, they run a gr um he runs a great podcast uh that I would highly recommend people checking out especially because I'm on it so shameless plug it's called uh, a mystery behind the magic. Uh, Matt, yeah, um, check just look it up. It's on Apple Podcasts and everywhere else. Uh, I think you'll I think you'll really enjoy it. They've done interviews with lots of great people, people far greater than me. Um, so uh, yeah, highly recommend their podcast. Um, all right, so let's see if I can get some questions. Um, someone said it's midnight where I live and I have to get up at six, but I just wanted to say hi, hi. Um, Seppe964, I appreciate your dedication, um, but please get some sleep. <laughs> yes, Mystery Behind Magic, that's the name. I, I, was, I almost said Magic Behind Mystery, uh, which is embarrassing because I was, you know, on the podcast. I should probably remember which way the name goes around. Uh, so, yeah, uh, let's see. Um, Danny is asking, hey, does anyone here know about good um, movies? Wow, thank you, Justin. Um, that's very, very kind of you. Also, I have alerts now. Ooh. Um, thanks for being the very first person to help test that out. <laughs> uh, I was wondering if those work. I, I I'm now using Streamlabs. Um, uh, uh, and now I've got, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Now I've got, you know, notifications and things like that. So, and their cards, of course, you know. 
Um, all right, so something about, um, what was this, movies or with sleight of hand in them? Um, uh, there's a movie called Shade, which is all about card cheating, sleight of hand stuff that's got some pretty cool demos in it. Obviously, um, there's um, uh, The Sting, right, 1970 movie, what a classic. Um, absolutely love it. Um, let's see, uh, Daniel, I've never seen this done by anyone. What do you think about the concept of doing a pass and then holding the break, allowing you to do a false cut? Ah, as in starting with the pass and then, oh, I see. So you do the pass and then you go into just a true cut, but it's false because you already started. Interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, there are different types of cuts that basically start with a pass, um, or cuts where you undo them later with a pass. I mean, that's how it would work at the card table, of course. Um, but yeah, that, that's totally doable. Generally, it's easier to just do a false cut that's, like, optically, you know, that's visually deceptive, and I mean, there are, you know, a million and one of those that aren't all that difficult. Um, uh, you know, things like this that are, that are very much doable and that really give a good illusion of the cards being cut or even something as simple as this. I've always really liked this one. Um, so yeah, there, I think, I think it's probably more difficult than it needs to be as all. If you do it well, it's certainly fine. Um, but I would, I would, uh, I certainly, I don't know. I think there are maybe more, I don't know if efficient is the right word. Well, I guess my favorite one is this. This is my favorite one is this sequence. Um, that comes out of uh, Steve Forty's books, um, and uh, is invented by a card cheat, uh, the late, uh, the late Rod the Hop, I should say. Um, uh, incredible card handler, and and uh, this is his a, a, a cutting sequence that he used. Um, and if you want to learn it, uh, check out Steve Forty's books, Gambling Sleight of Hand. Um, amazing books, um, uh, but a, a dense read and something I'm still still working on. Okay, let's get to some more questions. Uh, let's see, Max, you were saying that's your go-to um, uh, false cut. Yeah, and again, that's fine. I just think there's some more efficient ones out there. Uh, slightly easier one that I'd say my favorite one for magic is this. Um, but again, it's uh, the choice is yours. Um, Aiden is asking, when you chose to go to college for neuroscience, was it because of magic, or did you choose for other reasons? Well, I started out studying molecular biology in college, um, and I did that for about two years. Um, and then within the biology major, they let me switch um, to uh, neurobiology without having to retake prerequisites or anything. They were nice about that and let me uh, let me switch to it, which was cool. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, uh, it was kind of both reasons. One, I mean, yes, I was interested in neuroscience just because of magic, mentalism, and all that, and learning some of the reality behind it. Um, so that was definitely a part of it. Um, however, I also just was always interested in the brain, always was had been interested in maybe studying that. Um, and so I was getting a little tired of, you know, cell and molecular biology, and so moving over to neurobiology allowed me to, to make some, you know, take some more interesting classes. So that was, that was kind of the pathway. Um, let's see, uh, Rain is asking, how do you locate cards out of a shuffle deck and get them out? Um, I, a hard answer, there are many methods, many methods under the sun. Um, Teos is asking for finger exercises for routines, finger exercises for routines. Um, well, I mean, yeah, there are some exercises you can do for dexterity. But to be honest, I think it's you're probably better off just practicing the routines and practicing the sleight of hand uh, than uh, spending your time working on um, spending your time working on specific finger exercises. I just practice the moves slowly. I think you'll get more out of that. Okay, um, let's take a look at some other questions. Elio's asking, "Is this the Daniel Roy?" I mean, I am Daniel Roy, so maybe. Um, Ali is asking about bottom deal uh, methods. I'd start with the Erd Nace bottom deal. Check out Expert at the Card Table, obviously. And Jason England has this fantastic download that's part of his foundation series. It's on um, Theory 11, and I would uh, I would highly recommend checking out uh, that download. It's great. Um, that's how I initially learned it. Uh, someone's asking about the framed dollar bill in the background. Um, well, that's the first dollar I ever made doing magic. I was at a farmer's market in Hilo, Hawaii. Um, and this guy named Sharky, of course his name was Sharky, um, <laughs> was, uh, 
he was, uh, I forget what he was selling, but I did a card trick for him and he gave me a dollar. And I was kind of embarrassed that my parents like had him sign it and wanted it framed and everything, but I'm happy in retrospect they did that because it's a nice memento. Uh, okay, let's see. Holocron, have you seen Derek Delgadio's In and of Itself? Uh, I saw it on Hulu. I actually saw the show live twice and just had like a four-hour conversation with Derek afterward. He's a super nice guy. It was a fantastic show, and it was really nice to get to meet him and, and talk. Um, but yeah, saw it both live and, um, and uh, uh, in person, or live and in on Hulu, I should say. Same thing twice. Okay, um, Taskin is talking about uh, asking about sweaty hands. Any tips for that? Um, if you have very, um, if you've got very tacky or sweaty hands, try washing them with soap and water and drying them off. That will help to dry your hands out. If you have, uh, like me, drier skin, then you may need lotion to put on your hands to moisten them. I mean, if I don't moisten my hands with something, I can barely deal the top card, let alone the bottom one. Uh, all right, um, I really need to know, but is expert card technique good for the intermediate? It is, although it's a more old-fashioned book. I I'm a big advocate for card college. I really think that's one of the best sources, or maybe the best source for, book source at least, for, for getting, you know, learning, learning sleight of hand. Um, I'm currently working on an online course that I'm hoping will be out in maybe a few weeks, maybe a month, that will teach um, uh, sleight of hand, uh, starting with some, you know, more beginner stuff, but I think the fundamentals are important and people are often missing some of those. Uh, it'll probably be on Patreon, um, so shameless plug, uh, I will post more about that uh, soon, but yeah, online course uh, probably on, on Patreon in maybe a month, hopefully. Uh, all right. Swift Madara saying, how do you get two aces and one king? Can you still move them around and f still fool people? I, I don't know if you're talking about three-card Monty there, but uh, uh, he, sleight of hand um, is the answer. Let's see. Uh, St. McCall is asking, any tricks for the Ferris Shuffle? My cards don't split nice. Not sure if there's an angle or something. Um, I will. The Ferris Shuffle is a complicated move, far too complicated for me to really teach much on, on stream, but that will be included in the online course on Patreon. Um, I'll have a whole full in-depth, there'll probably be like a 30-minute video explaining that. Um, I'm happy to show you what the Faro Shuffle looks like. Not going to do it. Maybe you'll get something out of this, but this is what the Faro Shuffle looks like. I'll do it one more time, just for good measure. Uh, so here goes. I missed the split that time. Still happens. That is the Faro Shuffle. Uh, okay, someone is asking about cardistry. Have I ever done any of it? Have I ever tried it? Uh, I've tried a little bit, but beyond, you know, like a card spring and a few other things, I don't really do much in the way of cardistry. Um, I think it's beautiful. I just never really, um, just never really got into it personally. All right, um, let's see. Look at a few other questions. Uh, FV is asking about shaking hands uh, when doing magic. Just practice and experience on stage. Um, it will it will go away with time. It absolutely will, but it is just going to take some time uh, and a lot more time on stage and a lot more preparation. When you can go into a performance knowing that you have a response to any possible situation, that you could handle anything that could possibly happen, uh, that's when you'll start to feel a lot more confident. Um, and you won't have the same type, you know, level of nerves or anything like that. Uh, okay. Favorite mentalism effect I can do with a virtual audience? You know, I haven't done a lot of mentalism virtually. I've mostly done sleight of hand with cards. Some people have made mentalism translate well virtually. I was never able to get it to translate well personally for me, but um, that's not to say that it can't be done well. I'm sure I know there are people who have done a great job of it. Um, so I'm not really sure if I have an answer for you. Um, uh, do I do anything with coins or non-card things? Well, I do mentalism in person, not so much virtually. I used to do coins, ropes, you know, card manipulation, all that. Um, I don't do a lot of that anymore. I pretty much just do sleight of hand with cards. Um, all right, someone's saying I'm a big inspiration. Well, thank you. Glad to hear. Uh, do I like or do I like any of Dan and Dave's stuff? Well, yeah, I mean, I remember getting their trilogy DVD set um, when I was younger and, uh, you know, I never really learned the cardistry, but I really thought it was pretty incredible what they can do. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, love, love their work. Okay, uh, someone's saying, do casinos really actually hire people as skilled as you? These gambling sleight of hand to cheat in certain games? Well, you know, the odds are so, so, like, <laughs> stacked against you in a casino 
they don't need to hire a card cheat to <laughs> take your money. Um, I, I mean, it's just like the the odds are um, they, they're going to win no matter what. They don't need to do that. Um, Holocron is saying, will I release the online course outside of Patreon but for price? Maybe someday, but the whole point is that I'm going to be adding videos to it each month. And so it, it, the kind of purpose of it is to be a subscription type thing. I will have an option probably to subscribe for a whole year. Um, so uh, at a time rather than just a month at a time. But I haven't quite decided on pricing yet. But it'll be affordable. Uh, Colin, I keep passing the deck back and forth. Uh, is there a level two? Yes, and it will be explained in my, uh, in my online course. Absolutely. Okay, favorite mentalism effect? Probably Max Maven's Desire. Big fan of that. Okay, uh, Swift is saying my cards keep getting stuck together as I do tricks. Any tips? You probably need to open a new deck of cards if they're that sticky. Uh, what got you into magic? Well, I saw a magician do a couple tricks with cards and a few other things, and I was just fascinated by it, and that's really what, what got me into it. Uh, Alright, favorite Darren Brown trick or show? I'm a big fan of his q and I've always really liked that. Um, I've also really liked, he does this one with... Uh, uh, he does a trick where an audience member, apparently, eats glass, um, and I, I, it's a really beautiful piece when he does it in his shows at the dinner table and, and everything. I've always really liked that. Okay, um, I can't get my thumbs to do a clean, normal shuffle. Any exercises? Um, I assume you're talking about a riffle shuffle. Um, I don't know if you're talking about in the hands or on the table. At least if you're talking about a riffle shuffle on the table, again, this is just normal riffle shuffle, you need to make sure that you bevel the cards backward towards you, that you're leaning them towards you, and that your fingers are pinning the cards to the table at the outer end. Then you bow the cards upward using your thumbs. They bevel in, pin the outer edges, bow upward, and then let them fall one at a time after you do a slight inward twist like this. Uh, yeah, so Alex, that's what I'd recommend. Um, thank you so much for the super chat, by the way. Um, but yeah, you're going to lean the cards inward like this. So you're going to bevel them towards you, lift like this, allow them to um, bow like this, uh, and then you're going to move your thumbs upward like this, letting the cards riffle off. And you're going to pin them to the table and push the cards together. So that's what I would recommend. Uh, split, bevel towards you, pin the outer edges. So you're not picking up the cards, you're just pinning them to the table. And then you lift at the inner ends with the thumbs and let them fall. That's what I'd recommend for a riffle shuffle. Uh, Eddie Frazier saying that I inspired you to start doing magic. Oh, well, great. I'm glad to hear. Uh, Swift Madara asks, is that a wine bottle? Yes, it's a wine bottle um, over there. It's... um. It's called Four Kings Wine, so that's why I had to have it there. Um, L. Sarkis, how did you start getting paid to perform? Um, hmm. Well, kind of hard to answer. I mean, uh, in college, I started performing at a theater uh, called the Smoke and Mirrors Magic Theater, and I got a lot of my audition footage there, and that's what I was able to send to the Magic Castle and the Magic Lounge, and then that's what a lot of other gigs kind of came through. Um, I get contacted, you know, just because of my YouTube channel. I just get inquiries from people about booking virtual shows. Um, I don't know if I'm the best person to really answer the question about how to, you know, start getting paid. Uh, it's, um, yeah, I, I think, um, I mean, I think you have to put, like, you have to make yourself discoverable in some way. Um, that's definitely uh, important. That, I mean, people have to be able to find you. Um, and, you know, you may not be able to charge that much money when you get started, but, but eventually you'll be able to ask for more money, especially um, if you've had past clients and especially if you, once you're able to say no to a performance, um, that, that's a big, you know, big benefit because then you can ask for more money. Um, let's see, any tips on how to do a second deal? I keep getting three cards. I don't know if you're talking about a push off or a strike. Um, it's mostly just practice. Um, that's kind of a hard move. There, there's so much background to explain on a second deal. I don't know if I can really do the move justice on stream. But again, uh, that'll be that'll that'll show up in my online course at some point. I will teach the second deal in there at uh, at some point. Uh, okay, let's see. Thank you for the subscription, Amadeus. All right. Did I start getting paid. Let's see if I can find any other uh, questions I haven't answered yet. 
Uh, when you do the 10 levels of sleight of hand, the cards you're actually placing in those spots where you're just using sleight of hand and doing different techniques. I assume that you're talking about the riffle stacking, and no, I'm really doing it. That's, um, that's, I'm, I'm doing it for real on, on that riffle stacking phase. Okay, what is your favorite drink? Uh, alcoholic or not? Um, <laughs> that's the question. Um, I would say, um, uh, alcoholic, I guess I would say mm, maybe scotch or a gin and tonic, big fans of those. Um, yeah, maybe, it kind of depends, maybe a scotch or, um, single malt scotch or of some kind, just straight, uh, in the winter, and then maybe in the summer, like a, you know, nice cold gin and tonic. Uh, what's the question you've always wanted to, wanted someone to ask you, but have never gotten? Um... I don't know. Hard to say. Uh, yeah, hard to say exactly what uh, what I would want to be asked. Um, I feel like I get asked kind of every question under the sun, um, whether or not I want to be asked it. Uh, so, yeah, hard to say. Um, someone was asking about a certain counting technique. I'm not going to say too much about it uh, in terms of explain it because it would just I wouldn't really be able to do it justice on stream. Uh, but if nothing else, I will at least do the technique for you, like this. So, just so you can see it done. Hopefully that's satisfying. Okay, practice without a full deck, or make sure your cards are fairly new, Max is saying. Uh, yeah, that's, that, that can be great. If, if you're struggling with a move that depends on the size of the deck, um, start with half a deck. Add a few cards, do it again. Add a few more cards, do it again. Add a few more cards and work up to a full deck. Uh, then if you want to, you can even put the jokers in the deck and practice with slightly more than a full deck. Uh, would I ever actually teach three card Monty on my channel? I probably wouldn't teach it on my channel because if I were to like teach the routine, like actually teach you how to do it, that would be like a 60 minute video and that's just not gonna work on YouTube. But potentially on um, uh, an online course, absolutely, because I, that's, where, that's where I can make a you know hour long video or whatever it would be. Do I have any pets? Uh, yes, cats. Uh, cats. Uh, favorite playing cards for all uses. Uh, I mean, bicycle are my favorite playing cards. Um, although, uh, my favorite back design are these. Tallyho fan backs. Favorite card control. Need a good one to learn. Well, initially, I'm a fan of the uh, double undercut. Um, because that's kind of a great bread and butter card control. Uh, it will really, you know, it will get you a long, long way. Uh, so I'm a big fan of the double undercut. And there, there are a million and one other controls. Without saying too much about the technique, this is probably one of my other favorites to use, although it's more uh, advanced in nature. So keep it uh, sticking out of the middle of the deck. Uh, so that's that's probably what I'd say is one of my one of my favorite controls by a magician named Ernest, or the late, I should say, the late Ernest Eric like that. It's probably one of my favorites. Followed by, if you want to, um, you know, an overhand shuffle or something like that. Uh, Swift Mud, or I was asking about uh, seeing the online course. Well, it's not uh, it's not online yet, but I will make videos about it. It'll be in the description of every video. Uh, it will, um, uh, it'll be in the end screen credits. I will talk about it to no end as soon as it's coming out, and it'll probably become annoying. Uh, let's see. Do I like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? I don't know if there's, like, some inside joke there that I'm supposed to get, but, um, uh, yeah, sure. How much are private lessons? Just contact me on my website, danielroymagic.com slash booking, uh, and I can give you all the necessary details for lessons. Someone is saying, oh, we should teach how to riffle shuffle. Sure, um, I can always teach, you know, just card shuffling techniques. Always happy to do that. Um, so let's, um, yeah, let's see. So on the table, uh, B cards. Yeah, I like B cards too. Yeah. All right, so on the table, here are the cards. Or they're sideways like this. You want to do this on a soft surface, placemat, tablecloth, um, whatever. Uh, just not on a hard surface. You're going to split the cards in half. So cut over about half. And you want to flatten your hands out like this so that your fingers are together. And you take the tips of your fingers and you put them on the outer edges of the cards, pinning them to the table. Um, and because you're not going to pick them up like this. They're just going to be pinned to the table. Uh, and then you're going to use these fingers to slightly lean the cards backward towards the thumbs. You essentially have a bevel in the cards like this, like this, 
And then using your thumbs, you're going to pick these inner corners up. Uh, and you're sort of using pressure from your index fingers to help bow the cards like this. So they bend. You lift up the corners, you twist the hands towards each other, and then you slowly lift the thumbs like this, and you allow the cards to ripple off. And you're going to pin the cards to the table with your index fingers, rearrange your uh, hands to be able to push them together, square the cards up. So that is how to ripple shuffle on the table. Looks like this. So hopefully that answers your questions. Okay. Uh, someone is asking about um, how much time do I recommend practicing a day? Well, depends how much time you have. You don't want to burn out. You don't want to injure your hands. Um, but you just want to do it consistently. So it, it's actually it, practicing every day is more important than practicing, um, you know, uh, uh, practicing every day is more important than how much you, you might practice on, on a given day. So consistency really matters. And I teach the riffle fan. I don't know what you mean by the riffle fan. I'm not familiar with, with that um, term. Uh, Chip, uh, hmm, probably the Herman Pass. That's what I would say. Uh, have I ever seen Michael Vincent's rendition of Lucky Charms? Um, I assume, Zachary, that you're talking about the video that Michael Vincent posted on his channel about that. Fun fact, I filmed that video. I was in the audience and I filmed that for him. Um, so, uh, yeah, that rendition of Lucky Charms, I was, I was there and I'm the one who filmed it and sent the video to Michael. Um, so, just a little trivia. Uh, let's see, which books do you start with as a beginner? I've got the Royal Road to Card Magic, Expert Card Technique, and Expert at the Card Table. Start with Royal Road. The other two books are a little bit more advanced. Um, and I guess I would say Card College is really what you, uh, what you want to talk about. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I don't do much in the way of cardistry. Um, how often do I do streams? Um, I, I like doing them every week, um, but I don't always get to it, but I'm going to try to be more, um, more consistent about it. Uh, let's see, from what source did I learn the Ortiz version of the Way of the Duck? Oh, uh, from Darwin himself. That, that's from him, um, but he gave me permission to put it on YouTube. Um, do I have goals for what I'm doing on YouTube? Gain some exposure, uh, make videos that I find interesting, maybe get some, uh, Hopefully, I don't know, some brand deals at some point. That'd be cool. Uh, you know, grow my brand, um, and, and hopefully it'll turn into other things someday. Uh, how do I keep the cards clean? Um, well, have clean hands. Um, you don't want to handle cards with dirty or sticky hands. Uh, the professor, <laughs> good name, is asking uh, about some behind the scenes of Fool Us. Um, yeah, sure, I can talk about some of the behind the scenes. Um, just ask me any questions you have. Um, I, I made a whole video reacting to my... Um, um, reacting to my own, you know, performance. Uh, Olney is asking about um, creating a shorts channel. Um, actually, you girls can let you all can let me know about this. So here's what I'm thinking. Um, you know, the long form videos take a really long time to make, uh, and phenomenal. While I'm talking about this, I will just simply demonstrate what you asked about without saying what it is. Um, here's what you're asking about. Um, can I do Leonard Green's Flash Deals? Uh, I don't do the Snap Deal and stuff, but it's beautiful, but I just never learned it. Okay, um, talking about uh, shorts, what I'm thinking of doing is I may actually make one short per week um, that would be unique and different from my video and post it to my channel. I don't know if people would like seeing one short a week. Um, you know, uh, uh, hopefully that would be, um, you know, maybe interesting or some variety, uh, something like that. But yeah, just, I wouldn't want to, you know, spam the channel with shorts or anything, but it would be one unique, you know, 30-ish second video a week in addition to the, you know, weekly YouTube video. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. If that's, let me know if that'd be something you're interested in. Uh, if you uh, would like, you know, some shorts or at least, you know, maybe one a week just to kind of mix things up. How do you clean your cards? Um, you just open a new deck. Uh, there's not really a way to... Um, yeah. Uh, Charlie, am I aware that my fullest performance? Yes. So, uh, for some reason, a lot of them got copyright claimed, um, even though I have, I have full, like, legal permission to post it. Um, and so I've gotten in touch with the producers, uh, and it got unblocked outside the U.S. Um, I know the producers are, are busy with, with some projects right now, so they're, um, so I don't know if it'll get taken care of, but, um, hopefully it will be reinstated at some point. Um, but, uh, it, it, 
I mean, I have full rights to have it on my channel. Um, and so, uh, uh, you know, hopefully it'll get uncopyright claimed at some point. Um, I don't have any strikes, luckily, but it's just not visible in the US. Um, I think my reacting to Foolish video is on, um, uh, uh, is, um, I think that's still available in the US. I hope it is. I don't know. Uh, Olney is saying um, if I need help with um, uh, shorts. Yeah, sure. Um, you can always DM me on Instagram, at Daniel Roy Magic. Uh, if you've got any ideas about that, just shoot me a DM there. Um, shorts will be an amazing way. Yeah, um, uh, I hope people will watch them. Guess we'll find out. See, here, here's what I'm thinking about. Here, you guys can tell me um, about this. So I'm going to try to start posting more on other types of, on other social media, um, TikTok, Instagram, etc. Um, but here's the plan. Tell me in chat what you think about this. Uh, the plan is to take my YouTube videos, chop them up into little tiny segments, and post maybe daily um, uh, those little tiny segments, um, uh, uh, you know, to other social media platforms. And then each week I would also film one unique short video that would be not a repost from YouTube. Um, and that would go to YouTube and to other social media platforms as well. Um, and it would be on the same kind of um, uh, uh, like topic as the weekly video. So in other words, um, I, I would kind of have like a weekly theme in a way. Uh, so uh, thanks, glad you like the background. Um, so it would kind of be like a weekly theme, and I also might put like a little blog post on my website. I started making um, um, uh, weekly-ish blog posts on my website um, that you can, uh, that will kind of give some behind the scenes or extra thoughts in the video. So the idea, you know, would be to kind of have like a weekly theme where the theme is about the video I make. So I make the video, chop it up into little bits to post elsewhere, make a short that's uh, the same topic, and also write a little blog post about it. So I have kind of a a weekly, um, you know, theme to think about each week uh, that would relate to the video. Um, top shot looks like that, except don't drop the card. Shows how much I practice the top shot. Let's see if I can actually still do this. There we go. That's what it's supposed to look like. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a great idea. Only um, of yeah, it doesn't have to be a trick. It can also just be a little tidbit or something. Um, all right, uh, favorite magician of our time. Um, hmm. Still alive or not? I mean, my favorites generally are Ricky Jay, Darwin Ortiz, Darren Brown, and um, probably, uh, probably, uh, well, Hofsenser is, I mean, Hofsenser like invented like everything. Um, so much stuff people think was invented these days, Hofsenser, um, uh, Hofsenser invented like so much stuff. It's kind of amazing. And he really pioneered the style of parlor elegant close-up magic that I that I love. So uh, that's why I'm always a big fan. Why don't I use Phoenix cards? Oh, I love them. I just am so used to bicycle cards. Um, what is my favorite magic book uh, behind me and why? Huh. Probably Designing Miracles by Darwin Ortiz. Uh, favorite book on magic. It's a systematic way of thinking about designing magic tricks. Really changed my outlook. Okay, how did I get my first performance at the theater? I went to the theater to see a show, and then I did a few tricks for the owners backstage. Um, and they said, hey, we don't have an opener for tomorrow night. Do you want to open for us? And I said, yeah, sure. And that was that. Um, let's see. How do I deal with protecting my cards? I just open new ones. Um, I just, I, I don't. I don't use card clips anymore. I just open new cards whenever I need them. Um, and yeah, exactly. Uh, that good point, Max. Thanks for answering that. Uh, Richard Turner is amazing. I've unfortunately never met him. Uh, I'd love to someday, but I I've never met Richard Turner. Uh, but yeah, he's incredible. And someone asked about all the 13 techniques that he used in his fullest performance. I mean, we do the same type of material. So uh, yeah, to answer your question. Uh, where did I learn magic? Asked Glitch. Um, some mentors and some books and some videos, and the books are behind me. How do I how do you bridge cards after a shuffle? I assume you're talking about a shuffle like like this, uh, Swift Lara. Um, well, you've riffled them together. You put your thumbs on top. You bend up like this. Extend the fingers, and then you bring the hands slightly apart, and the cards will bridge together. Uh, Shizhou is asking, how do I prevent hand injury? Good question. I don't know because I've got a pulled muscle in my hand, so uh, clearly I'm not good enough uh, at preventing hand injury. Um, okay. Reese key, are you actually able to cut a very specific number of cards just by touch? 
Uh, yes, I won't get it 100% of the time, but I can get it most of the time. Uh, someone just says, Pop Hayden. He's great. I uh, love it. Yeah, I love his work. He's fantastic. Do you know... <laughs> Good meme. 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10 meme. Please show my card collection. I don't know. I mean, my card collection is just a bunch of used bicycle decks that I don't, like, touch anymore. I don't have much in the way of fancy cards, aside from... I don't even know if these are fancy. They were just a gift to me. Um, I don't really have much in the way of fancy cards. Um, yeah. Great example of a YouTube short right there. Yeah, yeah. That's... Yeah, absolutely. So maybe I'll do something like that. Okay, newest 40 book. Wish me luck. Yeah, good luck. If there's a lot in there. Um, best book to learn riffle stacking. Um, I would say, uh, well, I'd actually, um, say Jason England has a great download on it. That's what I would recommend, uh, on Theory 11. Fantastic. Um, love the video about the parents. Oh yeah, thank you so much. Uh, that was a fun video to make. I'm glad you liked it. Uh, that lamp is looking at me funny. I guess so. Uh, and, oh, um, Honorbith, thanks. Glad you, uh, glad you like the false deals. Um, Check out Report of the Week, You're the Review Bra of Magic. I don't know what that is. Um, you'll have to give me some more context. Um, do you think, who do you think is the best gambling skills under the age of 30? It's a good question. Hmm. Like, do you mean sleight of hand at card table skills? Maybe? Uh, if that's what you're talking about. Um, I mean, not me. I mean, I've... I've put a lot of time in, but I know people better than me. Uh, hmm. I mean, people have different areas of expertise. Uh, I mean, the be people who are best at it aren't magicians. They're people who do it for real at the card table. There's this guy, unfortunately he stopped making videos. Um, I think his name is Brad Tobin. He made videos years ago. He's got this channel called like Ace of Lumberjack and another one called um, Darb Nibbo. It's his name backwards. Um, and so I would say uh, he, he was really underrated. He's, his, his rhythm is like on another level. So I, I definitely uh, say he, he might take the cake for that. Um, under the age of 30, that's Marlo. Yeah, yeah, he's not, uh, not, quite, um, not quite under 30 anymore. Uh, do I follow the professional gambling scene? I watch some high stakes poker from time to time, but not really. Uh, how do you break in new cards? I don't really have any break in ritual, I just start using them. Have I tried illusions or effects in magic? Um, like stage illusions? Um, yeah, um, not, not really. And Max, I'm not sure what you mean by the subtle shift. I'm not, not entirely sure about, uh, what you, what, what move that is. Are the 40 books worth it? Uh, if you're going to put in the time to learn this stuff, yeah, they are. Um, what do you think about the Spanish School of Magic? I've seen a few questions about the Spanish School of Magic. It's it's wonderful. Um, I'm a huge fan of the work of Juan Tamarez and Arturo de Escanio. Um, so, that, yeah, that's what I that's what I uh, recommend reading more. Structural Conception of Magic, the Magic uh, the Magic Rainbow, or no, is it? No, 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 The Magic Way. That's the book of Tamarez that I'd recommend. Wait, is it that one? I forget which book it is. It is, yes, I would recommend The Magic Way by Juan Tamaris. Um, Someone asked about private lessons. Um, Max, what, the subtle shift? I, I don't know. Maybe I just don't know nomenclature of newer stuff. Um, can you direct, give me, just describe what it is in chat maybe? Or you can DM me on Instagram if you don't want to have it publicly, um, at Daniel Roy Magic. Someone was asking uh, about teaching online. Uh, go to my website, danielroymagic.com slash booking. And I put it in the chat. Um, and um, then you can go to that website um, and contact me. danielroymagic.com slash booking. Go there and uh, you will, uh, you'll you'll find some, um, uh, some uh, what do you call it, uh, the form to email me, essentially. And, and I'll give you more info about lessons. Uh, okay. Uh, someone is saying, have I used Copac 310 cards? Nope, never have. Um, heard good things about them, but I don't think I've ever used them myself. Mainly bicycle cards and occasionally tally-ho. 
Am I ever planning on revisiting Foolus? Yeah, I've got some other ideas for it. Um, the thing is, like, right now, of course, there isn't, they can't have a live audience there, and I, I personally prefer to do it with a live audience. Um, uh, so I'll, you know, I'll submit some more stuff in the, uh, in the future. Worst heckler I've ever had? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I once had a guy come on stage and, like, I don't know. Yeah, a, a couple of people asking about hecklers. Um, Saint McCall, sign and sell your huge pile of decks. Oh, maybe. Oh, uh, imagine seeing... That. Wow, Justin, thank you so much for the uh, super chat. That's super kind of you. Um, produce a block of ice from under a hat in a hot restaurant. Malini's trick. Oh, yeah, it's a wonderful story. Okay, so first let me go back and, and answer. But again, thank you so much, Justin. Um, let me go back and, and answer the question that someone had about... Um, uh, so that someone had uh, about... What do you call it? Um, oh, hecklers. Yes, hecklers. Um, uh, I had a guy come on stage and he had like a false tooth. And just in the middle of a trick, he just took out his false tooth and just put it on the table. Kind of weird. Um, I had another... I've had a few people come on stage and they're like very grabby with the cards. And I don't mean like in a casual situation. I mean like in a formal show in a theater with an audience there. Uh, usually that really doesn't happen in situations like that. People aren't going to be so, um, I mean, usually if that happens, people are drunk. Um, Akina, uh, I don't really break in new cards. I, I just don't. Um, yeah, uh, I, I just, um, I just don't really break in new cards. I just start using them. Uh, Max, you're saying you basically can control a card to the top. You just bring the top half. Hmm. Uh, maybe send me a link to a video, like DM on Instagram. Um, uh, yeah, maybe DM me on, on Instagram about that, and uh, I'll learn more about it. Can you show how to do the riffle at the end of the shuffle? I can't seem to get it right. Uh, Sturk, are you talking about um, the uh, the bridge? Ah, yes, 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 Mac. It's I'm not going to do the move, but it's the one where, like... The card's like this, and then you show it up like this, and you do something back here, which we know what it is, and then you do this, and then it's on top. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, Chris Ramsey, uh, love his videos. He makes really, really cool videos. Um, and he was recently on Ellen's, Ellen DeGeneres' show, and he did a really great bit on there with, uh, with um, Wes Barker and two others. Uh, they were great. Uh, okay. Favorite card, Seven of Spades. Uh, favorite heckler comeback i don't know if i really have a good comeback generally the best practice is just to ignore them because what they're looking for is attention and um if you don't give them attention they'll just stop it's like a bully in middle school they're just they're just looking for attention favorite deck um blue tally ho fan backs okay uh how do you handle audience members who are grabby with the cards and try to make the trick fail must be awkward well um you know, it's about picking your picking your person. You develop kind of an intuitive sense for who to pick and who not to pick uh, for um, for a given trick. If you're worried someone's going to be kind of grabby, you can usually you know get good at sensing that up front. Um, you know, so that's what I that's what I uh, recommend. Is you just need to perform a lot. But the the main thing is you if there's ever a situation in a trick where um, it would be disastrous if someone grabbed the cards. Um, you need to make sure you've got control over the cards or that you can get there first. So if there's a trick where like a card, one card's gonna change into another. So like you show someone the six of, uh, like the six of clubs, for example, and you put the card on the table and it's gonna change in a moment. Um, you need to make sure that you can get there first. So often what you can do is you can say, okay, put the card on the table. Would you take your hand, put your hand on top of it? Now put your other hand on top, right? They think they're guarding the card from you, but because their hands are occupied, they're not going to be able to, um, you know, grab the card. So uh, that can help. And sometimes if you, they look like they're going to turn it over, you can even take one of their hands and like push their hands down on top of it. Um, so that, that, can, that can work. And then you can reveal the color change later. Um, is magic my main job? Yes. Uh, do I have a tip for someone who's just starting? Uh, Card College Volume 1 and my online course coming soon. Shameless plug. Uh, oh yeah, the title of the course is going to be Card Magic 101. Uh, that'll be the, the title. So um, that'll uh, that'll be out hopefully soon. Favorite Jay Sankey trick? Hmm. There are so many. Uh, he's a pretty prolific inventor. Um, uh, paper clipped. I love paper clipped. 
it's it's a wonderful effect. I think that's his, isn't it? I think that's his. Uh, had him select a card. I showed it to did a top change. Then I showed a different card to the rest of the group. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, Max, I can see where you're going. Yeah, that 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 would be pretty funny. And also do some cool dual reality uh, dual reality uh, stuff. I don't want to say too much about that. Guy Hollingworth has some stuff in his book, Drawing Room Deceptions, around that concept. Uh, without going into too much detail here, uh, and I think you'll, um, I think you'll, I think you'll um, enjoy it. Okay, uh, let's see. Yeah, maybe a little mean, Max, but pretty funny. Uh, I agree. <clears throat> Glitch is asking what got me into magic. Um, I saw a magician do a card trick um, at a fundraiser when I was like 10 and just was fascinated by it. Went to a magic shop, bought Card College Volume 1, um, and yeah. Uh, Swift Modder is asking, how do you do a middle deal or card from the middle? Um, uh, you waste your time and hate yourself, and then you can do it eventually. Uh, Mackie is asking, I can't shuffle cards one by one. How can I do it? Uh, well, you don't actually, when you're shuffling cards one by one, you're not, like, dropping them one at a time or anything. It's a technique called the Pharaoh Shuffle, and, uh, I will make a video on it in my online course coming soon, uh, to a Patreon near you. It's gonna get so, uh, annoying and repetitive when I just keep plugging the online course, but hey, gotta do it. Do you believe in Richard Turner's philosophy in messing with cards for 16 hours a day? Well... Um, it kind of depends how good you want to get. If you want to get really good, you got to practice a lot. Uh, I did that when I was younger. Um, maybe not 16 hours, but when I was little, you know, maybe 10, 12 hours a day. I don't do that anymore. Um, someone was asking about the bridge. Uh, let's talk about the bridge at the end of the shuffle. Uh, you riffle the cards together. Uh, very briefly, you put your thumbs on top, uh, like this. Uh, but the thumbs need to be on the part, uh, where both halves are interlaced. They can't be here, they have to be here. You've got your fingers under the cards, you turn your hands and you twist them downward, bringing the fingers closer together, like this, and then you extend your fingers, while keeping pressure from your thumbs, you now slightly move the hands apart, so you're slightly moving them apart, and that will cause the cards to spring together. But you have to keep your thumbs on top, because if you were to release your thumbs, the cards come apart that way. That's very important. And you also have to have... Um, uh, your fingers like this really under the cards supporting them, otherwise the cards just fall on the table. Uh, when did I start getting into magic? When I was 10. Uh, One-handed magicians. Um, Rene Lavand. Rene Lavand, uh, no longer with us, unfortunately, but he's a one-handed, um, one-handed magician. Um, and really incredible work. Uh, from the Spanish School of Magic. Spanish School of Magic. Gosh, I can't even speak. Um... Okay, uh, someone uh, only followed my Instagram. Thanks. Favorite um, El Sarkis, favorite one. Mm hmm. Probably, uh, probably this one, where they pick a card. Uh, that one. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, what do I think is an incredibly hard technique that's not really efficient or worth it to work on? Uh, the center deal, the table pharaoh. Um, Anir Bif, uh, thanks for sending an inquiry. I'll check it later. Okay, anybody anybody enough messing with cards? I didn't read that. Um, like the stream because I have the entire stream. Uh, yeah, people probably do mess with cards during the stream. If they get mad, um, telling you that you did something wrong. Oh, like giving feedback to other magicians. I mean, you know, it, you kind of have to evaluate uh, what your social relationship is with them. Um, it's like anything else. Uh, if you feel like you'd socially be able to give them constructive feedback, that's great. If not, just don't do it. Um, I guess what I would say is when you're giving people feedback, there's this idea called like the sandwich model of giving feedback where you like start with something they did well and then have like constructive, nice, you know, but criticism. And then you end with another thing they did well. So you're kind of validating them and then giving them your feedback and then validating them again, because that can help. Um, but not always. Why is the table pharaoh not worth it? Is there a better one? The pharaoh is very worth learning. The table pharaoh is just sort of unnecessary. Uh, unless you really care about making your pharaoh shuffle look like a riffle shuffle. What's my favorite opening effect for getting people's attention? I'm not sure. I'm not usually not trying to get people's attention. I don't really do walk around magic. Um, so, uh, I'm usually not really trying to get attention. I really only perform if I have people's attention already. 
Is there a difference between the second deal and the push-off second deal? Well, there are two types of second deal. There's a strike second deal, uh, which uh, looks like this. I really can't do this while looking at the monitor. Let's see if I can do some actual strikes. All right, here we go. Those are strikes, whereas these are push-offs. So they're just different techniques. Uh, favorite opener? Hmm, probably the trick I did on Penn and Teller, that one. Uh, let's see, Phenomenal Phantom, sorry about that I put in the wrong word, spell words wrong. All good, don't worry about it. Um, how did you work up the nerve to do your first show? Uh, practice, you just need to practice a lot and feel really confident in your material and feel confident that no matter what happens, you could handle it every situation. And if you do that and you're not, you know, burdened by uh, thinking all about, um, you know, oh, is this next move gonna work? What's my script? Uh, you'll, you'll be a lot better at performing. Hey there, Ed. Uh, heard you were a little busy yesterday. <laughs> Hope that was fun. Uh, favorite trick that doesn't involve cards? Well, Max Maven's Desire is probably my favorite piece of mentalism. I mean, I guess that sort of involves cards, although not playing cards, so. Sturk, how do you feel about plastic playing cards? Uh, well, uh, that's actually what's pr primarily used to play Texas Hold'em, our bridge-sized plastic playing cards. Um, Justin, I feel like I'll be eating a lot of sandwiches if I take one of your classes. Uh, potentially, but I'm nice about it. Um, <laughs> um, yes, I've thought about uh, going on Fool Us again. Maybe I'll do that at some point. Um, and someone was asking something earlier that I got halfway through responding. Ah, yes, plastic cards. Uh, they just feel different in your hands. Um, uh, you just have to get used to them. That's all. Best way to read a magic book? Um, depends on the book. Uh, some books are meant to really be reference text where you just read a little bit at a time. Other books are more meant to be read cover to cover. Honestly, read them in whatever way is fun for you. Um, I actually kind of recommend reading many magic books at a time so that there's always something that's interesting to you. Um, some people would say, oh, no, you have to read one book at a time. Stay focused on it. And sure, maybe that's a better way of learning. But the truth is that if you just read one book at a time, you might get bored of it or, um, you know, not be interested in it. And then you just end up not reading books. And it's probably better to at least be reading books, even if you're jumping around a lot. Um, so have I ever been in a casino? Yes, I have been in a casino, but I don't gamble. Um, uh, it's just not worth it. The odds are too bad. Let's see, I was practicing sleight of hand at school and I had to do a performance as people started crowding around me. Yeah, that's happened to me. Um, Dell, I didn't see your question. Just put it in chat again. Um, sorry for not answering it. Too many messages, sometimes I, I miss them. What do you recommend practicing uh, using a mat and a mirror? Depends. You want to practice uh, in a way that is consistent with the way you're going to perform. So if you're going to be performing in an environment where you have a mat or a soft surface, practice with a mat. If you're gonna be performing in an environment where you do not have a mat or a soft surface, practice without a mat. You wanna make your practice conditions mimic your performance conditions. What do I like about doing virtual shows? Asks El Sarkis, uh, that I can do them right now. Um, are they like in-person shows? No, but they've been a very interesting kind of problem to solve of trying to figure out how to make them interactive and fun. Um, do you have any other tricks that you can do easily without cards? Uh, yeah, I do some stuff without cards, but, but not really on the in virtual shows, I pretty much stick to cards. Same thing with the internet. But yeah, I do some things without cards. Favorite closer? Uh, probably the thing that I close my castle show with. Um, a routine that I call the man, the myth, and the legend. Uh, funny story, when I was in a casino, um, you know, people were like, oh, have you ever been kicked out of, casino, out of a casino? And the answer is, I was almost kicked out of the casino. Uh, not for anything related to a card table. I just look really young and they thought I was not 21 and they asked to see my ID and I was like 23 or 24 at a time. At the time, I should say. Can you do a clean brick pass? Um, let's see. Um, I, uh, I um, don't do much in the way of classic passes. I mean, I can mechanically do them, uh, but uh, I would say that uh, there's this person named Ed Kwan who does the best pass I've ever seen, but he's reclusive and doesn't like performing. But he does by far, I think he does the best, the best pass I've ever seen in my life. Um, someone was asking, what do you do when you mess up a trick? Well, you need to have a plan. Um, now, there are different ways of messing up, right? There's a mess up that you can recover from, and then there's a mess up where it's so bad that you basically just need to stop and do something else. 
Uh, so that's, you kind of have to characterize, um, you kind of have to characterize it. Uh, that is true, Ed, maybe except for you. Um, um, if you ever have the chance to see Ed, do a pass. Um, well, you won't see anything. Um, uh, yeah, it's nuts, and it makes me very angry how good he is at it. Um, <clears throat> is it possible to do a simple fan with a cheaper deck of cards? Well, uh, bicycle cards are pretty cheap, and yes, but if they have a bad finish on them, uh, then not really. Uh, let's see. Okay, but yes, uh, regarding messing up, um, if you can recover from it and take the trick in a different direction or save the trick, um, then yeah, uh, that's, then, then you do it. You need to have a plan for how you would get back on track. However, sometimes you just need to, uh, basically, you know, just go do another trick and just kind of transition to something else. Uh, so always have a backup trick that you can do anytime, anywhere. That's really impressive, uh, that you can always go into. What's the purpose of the classic pass? Um, well, it can do things that very few other card controls can, and it's often not just used to control one card, because that would be inefficient. It's used to cut the deck, um, without revealing too much. Um, let's see, Elio, you're a 13 year old aspiring magician. Do I have any tips for getting started with your future career? Hmm. I mean, I'm not that far along in my career, so I don't know quite how relevant my advice would be. Um, but, uh, I mean, uh, there's magic and there's marketing, and you need to be good at both. Um, you need to be good at magic so that when you do magic for people, they like it. Uh, but you also need to be good at marketing yourself. And I'm not great at marketing myself, but I did start a YouTube channel. Um, and that's been a great thing so far. You just need to... You need to increase your surface area in the world, right? You need to make it possible for people to discover you. Uh, and you want to be in a position, or at least what I've heard, is that you want to get yourself into a position where people are asking things of you rather than the other way around. But um, I, I, I'm early in my career, so I would take my advice with a grain of salt. Uh, what, are my, what are my thoughts about street magic and would I do a video about it? I think it's great. Uh, I, it's just not really my thing personally. Um, just, I do a kind of a different style than that. Uh, let's see. Uh, big fan from France. Thanks, Quentin. Can I do my favorite version of Triumph? I'll think about it. Maybe I'll have to think about what my favorite version would be. How's my degree in neuroscience going? Uh, well, I graduated last year. I, I have an undergraduate degree in uh, biology where I concentrated in neurobiology from UPenn. Uh, okay. Oh, great advice. Well, I don't know. Hopefully, I, I, I don't know how good my advice is. Um, gotta go. Uh, I'm Nick. Well, thanks. Thanks so much, uh, Swift Madara. Um, have a good day, night, something. Uh, what's the most popular and well-known marketing book? Uh, maybe, yeah, that, that could work as well. Um, I mean, social media has really changed the game because, like, I could spend my time calling people and talk to one person, or I could make a YouTube video and have a lot of people watch it. Like, YouTube has been the best career decision I've ever made. Um, what is the first magic trick you learned? Uh, you know that trick on my channel where I, uh, the easy magic trick where I do the friction toss thing, um, with a three card catch? Um, that's actually a big, that, that may, might be the first real, quote, trick that I learned. Uh, the moment where the spectator thinks they know how the trick is done, but in reality they're completely wrong, but you can't correct them because you'll reveal the trick. Yeah, that does happen, Max. Um, wow, thank you so much, J Justin. Wow, uh, thanks, thanks again. Um, very, very generous of you for the, uh, super chats. Um, let's see, uh, someone was asking, oh yeah, uh, Max was talking about, um, um, that, so I would really recommend taking a look, um, uh, uh, at, uh, uh, Juan Tamaris is the magic way. Um, I think that will help you with, with that question. Um, Justin was asking about, um, my favorite Ricky J non-card trick. Well, I mean, that ice block story is pretty great. It's sort of a card trick, but there's this trick in 52 Assistance that was cut out of the show, although it is on YouTube now, called the Automaton. And it does involve a card, but it also involves an Automaton. That would probably be my favorite. I think it's just beautiful. I absolutely love that piece. Okay, uh, let's see. How do I deal with hecklers? Uh, ignore them. Um, they're looking for attention, and you don't want to give them attention. Um, All right, wow, thank you, thank you um, so much, the Ninja Gaming Bear, that's really kind of you. Liquor 50s, what do you think about card history and magic? 
Um, I would recommend, if you want to learn more about cardistry and magic, read Darwin Ortiz has an essay that he wrote at the end of um, his book called Scams and Fantasies with Cards. It's an essay called On Showing and Hiding Skill. I may actually make a video about it at some point because I think it's such a well-written and such a well-thought-out essay. I may make a video where I give my own thoughts about it. Um, but um, I think cardistry can have a role in magic. There are a lot of great ways of using cardistry and magic that add to the magic. There are also a lot of ways of using cardistry and the magic that actively detract from the magic. So it's not that it's good or bad, you just have to use it correctly. Um, but it can certainly enhance things quite a bit. Uh, let's see, um, apply for the magic circle. I don't know, maybe someday, but I'm in the States, so. Um, uh, Chip Douglas, how do I close my ACR? Uh, sometimes that bent corner, uh, bent card, you know, pop-up thing from Expert Card Technique. It was published in 1940. Can you believe that? Long time ago. Maybe even before. Um, uh, Dong Wan, I'm currently in high school. Do you have any advice on catching up on all the schoolwork and studies while practicing as well? Um, there's this book called Make It Stick, The Science of Successful Learning. Read that. It will teach you some really effective studying techniques that will vastly, uh, that will make you much more efficient and then more time to practice. But it'll also make you better at learning magic. Uh, it's uh, better for learning everything. Learn books on how to be efficient at studying. Um, that, that, that will definitely pay, pay dividends. I wish I'd read that book earlier in life. Um, okay. Uh, Owen says, thanks so much. Uh, great. Um, what's my favorite card trick? Hmm. Three card Monty, maybe. Or Triumph. <laughs> Your slide doesn't say you just have to quit telling us how you do them. Ah, uh, yeah. I try to, I, I like explaining a little bit of it, but I, um, you know. I like doing, what I like about in performance is where it feels like I've explained a lot of how the trick is done, but I've actually only explained like 5% of it. Um, so people think that they know how it works, but actually they don't realize how fooled they are. I always kind of like that. Um, and the same is true in my YouTube videos. You know, some it sounds like I'm explaining a lot about how the tricks work, but if you really know how they work, you'll realize how much I'm leaving unexplained um, and how much nuance there is. Who is the best magician to you? Oh, according to me. Well, I don't know if I can really answer. There's so many, there's best in so many different ways. Um, you know, my idols are Ricky J, Darwin Ortiz, uh, Darren Brown, and Hofsenser as well. Uh, let's see. Feel free to write me, edquan1902 at gmail.com. Yes, feel free to write Ed with all your strange requests. Um, bold move, Ed. Bold move. <laughs> uh, dribble catch. Well, lots of sneaky ways to do it. Um, yeah, you can do it for real. Um, uh, Coach Kimlet did it on Penn and Teller Fool Us. Uh, it's a real move. It just takes some practice. Three card Monty tutorial. Uh, that'll be in my online course. It would take too long to teach on. Um, take too long to teach on uh, on YouTube. Favorite gimmick. Uh, well, I don't want to say too much about that just to reveal. Uh, I don't want to reveal too much there. Um, let's say rather than favorite specific gimmick. I, I, if I'm going to use a gimmick, I need to be able to get it into play and out of play without the audience knowing about it, right? So it has to be something that you can bring in and out of play. Savage, is it expensive for a class with you? Uh, if you want to learn more details about a lesson, just look up danielroymagic.com slash booking. It's actually in the description of this live stream. Um, just click on the link uh, and put in uh, an inquiry on my website. What was the book about studying called again? It's called Make It Stick. The Science of Successful Learning. Put it in chat. Make it stick. Science of Successful Learning. I think that's the title. It's definitely called Make It Stick. Maybe I'm misremembering the, um, misremembering the subtitle. Okay. Do you know the cardistry move called the spring? I assume you're talking about that one. Maybe I'll make a little, uh, you know, short tutorial about it. Something you can teach pretty quickly. Um, Anthony, I don't use that one. Uh, I use a different one. Um, you get nervous with lifts, public. Um, yeah, it's just going to be a matter of confidence uh, in terms of the, uh, um, in terms of that knowing that everything will stay, stay secure and staying together. Is the mid deck spin out thing difficult to learn or just looks it? I don't really know exactly what you mean. I mean, there's this spin out, uh, or I don't know if you're maybe talking about the uh, the other spin out, which is this one. Um, they're both learnable. Uh, I mean, you know, they're fun moves. Okay, how much time does the dribble catch take to practice? 
for. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's not a move that I've ever learned precisely. Um, it's kind of knacky. I think it's just, uh, I don't know how reliable it ever is. That, you know, um, I don't know how reliable it ever is. That That's like having not, I've never seen a person do it like a hundred times in a row in public. Um, so yeah, I, I really don't know. Is there any really expensive deck of cards that I want? I didn't even know that there were decks of cards that were that expensive. I, I don't know very much about the, um, like, collectible, you know, I, I just don't know very much about collectible, uh, the collectible card market. It's just not, not a thing that I, that I know too much about. Um, so, I, I guess, yeah, hard to say, um, uh, because I, uh, I just, uh, don't, yeah, it's kind of not really my, uh, my area. Um, so I don't really know if there are any kind of collectible cards that I'd like. Okay. St. Bacall, the set, second one. Yeah, it's called the Benzaeus Spin Out Move. The Benzaeus Spin Out Move. All right, let's see. What else? Someone said... Uh, Lorenzo. Lorenzo said... Jack, I can't... I can't tell what suit that is, Lorenzo. It's not, like, showing up properly. Something, Jack something at the 24th position. Can you um, put that in chat again, Lorenzo? Jack something at 24. Whatever the suit, if you can type out the suit, it wasn't like showing up right for me or something. Um, do you ever get mixed up which card trick you're performing? Huh. I don't know if that's ever happened, if I've forgotten what trick I'm doing. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't think that's ever happened. Am I an avid Uno player? Uh, no. Um, the only decks are made of wood. Uh, hard to shuffle. Uh, yeah, they don't wear out, but hard to shuffle. Elio, 50 bicycle decks. Yes, that's exactly what I would like with $100. Okay. Um, have I ever done lectures in the IBM circuit? I, I did a lecture at SAM in um, uh, January of 2020. Gosh, that was a long time ago. Um... So, uh, I, I did a lot. Well, not a lecture. I did. I was one of the performers there. I didn't lecture. Um, so I have not done any IBM lectures, no. Can you force text hold them with burn cards? Uh, can you control it? Yeah, the burn cards don't really make things much harder. Uh, in my classes, do I teach slates or tricks? Uh, depends on what student wants. Okay. When exactly am I getting married? Uh, gosh, I gotta find a girlfriend first. Uh, you know, a lot of steps. Lorenzo, uh, oh, spades, says Lorenzo. Okay, so I think Lorenzo said Jack, I guess the suit is spades, and at the 24th position, Jack of spades at 24. Okay, here goes. Jack of spades at 24. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24. There's your card of any number. Okay. I'm still fooled by it, but I heard it's easy. I don't know what trick you're talking about, Max. Um, saw your video about the Pharaoh Shuffle like two weeks ago, and you can finally do it. Congrats. Someone is saying lol. Maybe something was funny. Let's see. Poker test by Eric... Casey, the Ninja Gaming Bear says, find a girlfriend. Don't you have enough queens in those decks? Yeah, unfortunately, they're, um, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, they are, um, uh, paper. Okay, um, let's see, do you use a different stack in what application? Just any card at any position or what else? I use it for lots of things. Um, Someone said an eight-year-old Juan Tamaris can do that trick. Uh, I, I do not use the Tamaris, uh, just so people can see that they're not in not in that order. Um, uh, okay, in fact, these are not in any particular order, except for the Jack of Spades being at the 24th position. I'm basically a younger version of Richard Turner. Uh, I, Richard Turner's great. That being compared to him is really, uh, really flattering. Yes, St. McCall. <laughs> okay, that's pretty funny, St. McCall. Um, is there a way to reduce noise when doing the bottom deal? And does the condition effect of the, of the deck affect the noise? Um, 
Yeah, uh, it's really hard to explain that on stream. Um, so I, I don't, I don't know uh, if I could really get the point across. Yes, there are ways of doing it, and um, so I, I don't know. I, I, I think you don't want to use a deck that's too beat up because that could make the cards a little too sticky when you're practicing. Um, yeah, try to not exert too much upward pressure on the card as it's coming out. That will increase the noise if you do that. So try to exert less upward pressure with your left fingers. Maybe I'd recommend trying that. <clears throat> uh, okay. Let's see, what other questions? All right, so uh, if people want me to like, you know, if there's a video that someone wants me to watch maybe on, um, uh, on YouTube and do, react to it, a magic video. Uh, it can't be like a copyrighted thing, like part of a movie, because then I'll get like, you know, copyright claims in my stream. But if there's a performer or something uh, that I would, uh, that you think that you'd like to see my reaction to, um, uh, feel free to just put their name in chat and I will uh, find a video. You can also just, you know, tell me the performer and the video and I can watch it on YouTube and we can all watch it together and I'll react and give my thoughts. I'm not gonna explain how they do anything. Uh, it's not the, the goal here, um, but I will, um, I will, uh, uh, you know, give my thoughts, talk about what works, what made it interesting, and all that, ja all that jazz. Uh, <laughs> sounds like someone got a date with magic. Um, nice job. Not easy. What magic books do I recommend for newer magicians? Card College Volume One. Uh, okay, love your content. Inspired me to try learning some card tricks. Run. Oh, thank you so much. Glad you, glad you liked the DLI. Very, very, very nice of you. Thanks for the super chat. Max says, I'm mad because I can riffle stack but can't understand a simple trick. Eh, yeah. I, I feel that. I very much feel that. Okay, not a performance. Could you look at my second deal and give me some advice? It's on my channel. Uh, sure. DM me on Instagram. If I have time, I'll be able to do it. No guarantees, though. But DM me on Instagram at Daniel Roy Magic. Is there a way to stack the deck? To stack the decks to other people? They can bet more. Uh, it's called a cooler, where you have a deck that's um, that's uh, um, you know set up um, in advance. Uh, Savage Ed Quan is really good. Yes, Ed Quan is one of my closest friends. Uh, his castle set is in incredible, but he keeps taking it down on YouTube. Maybe it's up online right now. Well, let's find out if Ed's uh, if Ed's video is, is on YouTube. I can react to it. So this will be fun. He's gonna take it down as fast as he can. Um, let's see if it's online. Is it? Is it? Ah, uh, no, he took. Damn, Ed. Oh, a couple uh, bits on some of those uh, TV shows you were on. Maybe I could look at those. Eh. Okay, uh, let's see. Where are we at? Where's the chat? Here it is. Nope, not that. Here it is. Okay, uh, do, 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 do. Let's see if I missed anything. Yeah, no, Ed is incredible. Uh, and, um, and, yeah. I. Uh, his, if his thing was up, then I would react to it. Okay, uh, Killian Petrick. Oh, thank you so much. That's really, really nice of you. Um, favorite Darwin Ortiz routine? Hmm. Um, there are so many to choose from. Well, the one I, th maybe Ultimate Card Shark uh, is one of my favorites. Uh, also Card Sense. I've always loved Card Sense. Yeah, those are probably my two of my favorites. Okay, did I switch deck on my performance? I don't know which performance you're talking about there. Central Scrutinizer. Hey, Daniel, my daughter is single, beautiful, and a nurse. Wow. All, all, all wonderful, wonderful traits. I don't think I've ever been, um, uh, uh, ever had a, <laughs> ever had an offer like that during a live stream. Um, yeah. DM me on Instagram. Why not? I'm half joking, but half not. Um, <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, okay. You have to cut at the right spot to stack for other players. Um, before you do the shuffle, you cut at the precise location. Yeah, if you're going to stack the deck for another player, you, you have to make sure the cut doesn't ruin the stack, because that could displace everything. Yeah. Um, react to 673 King Street by James Galea or Three Card Monty by Garrett Thomas. Uh, oh, like Stand Up Monty, that routine? Yeah, I could look at that. Um... Can I do a one-handed shuffle? I don't know if it's one of the hardest moves. Uh, I can't do it with my left hand right now because I have uh, managed to pull a muscle, but I can 
I'm gonna try with my right hand, which I'm not that good at uh, this shuffle, but I can do it. Yeah, there we go. So I don't do the one-handed shuffle all that well with my right hand, but I can mechanically do it at least. I've got a pulled muscle in my left hand, so I wouldn't be able to do the one-handed shuffle right now. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. 673 King Street by James Galea. I don't know who James Galea is. Or Three Card Monty by Garrett Thomas. I, do you mean stand-up Monty? But yeah, if people have um, people have uh, performances on YouTube that you would like me to watch and react to, I will happily do so. What's my best gambling routine? Probably the closer of my castle act. Um, hopefully that's the best one. Um, yes, any stand-up Monty version. Yeah, I could react to that. Why not? All right. Let's see. All right. Yeah. Why don't we? Uh, why don't we go find uh, Stand Up Monty? Actually, let's do it. Uh, someone saying, "Well, if I'm friends with Ed Kwan. Does that mean that you are all by proxy friends of Ed Kwan?" Of course. What else? Uh, all right, let's find Stand Up Monty. Stand Up Monty. Garrett Thomas. I guess we'll watch this one. Sure. Okay. Okay, uh, let's see. Don't I? I make this weak. Shuffle? No. Now I'll figure it out later. Okay, let's watch some Stand Up Monty. So that means I first need to go here, and then I need to go uh, yep, like that. Program output, and then I guess we're going to go here and here. There we go. Uh, okay, hopefully people can see me. Uh, yeah, so now let's uh, give it a watch. Well, actually, let me just briefly make sure that uh, that people can um, see me. Give me one second. Uh, I will be back momentarily. Okay, so hopefully people can, uh, can see me. Alrighty. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's give it a watch. that you should never play. Uh, it's a game called Three Card Money, and usually they play us for money. We're not going to play it for money. So just for context, this is Garrett Thomas, incredible magician. He was recently on Penn & Teller Fool Us. Um, really nice, really, really, really cool guy as well. Um, this is, uh, you know, kind of table hopping, walk around magic, which means it's just a different context. It's just a different performance environment, which means there are lots of different considerations. It's loud. Um, people may be distracted by stuff. There's stuff in the middle of the table. Uh, poor visibility, potentially. So... Garrett is one of the best in the world at this style, uh, and uh, so let's see, let's see how he does it. The idea is to find the queen. Where's the queen? Okay, good. They, they let you win a couple of times, build, build up your confidence. Good. Starting with a little bit of a gag, getting people used to the idea of following the queen, um, you know, getting people sort of, uh, I don't know what the right word is, on his side in a way, um, keeping it lighthearted, making it clear that this is meant to be lighthearted in nature. Now I have a distractor card. All right. So the idea is to keep your eye on the queen. Actually, you could place your hand out. Perfect. So all okay, you got to so, do is... Uh, again, just to be clear, I'm not going to talk about how the trick works, but I will say for any magicians watching, uh, the way that he starts to establish how he's going to have people hold their hands out and pulling the hand towards him and transferring the cards to his right hand, or left hand, I guess, in that uh, situation as a result of doing that, it's a very important sequence to get the audience used to. Follow the queen. So make it really flat. Good. So, so where's the queen? See, we got you already. See, as when I said make your hand really flat, that was enough to make you con be confused. I switched the cards on you. Very it, true. May maybe it's too much to follow, uh, so I'll distract you a little bit more. That, that sounds fair. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to show you what they do. They switch the cards very quickly when you're not looking. You think you're betting on the queen, but they've already changed it. You know, there's no way to actually get paid, so never play this game. But we'll Very true. There is no way to ever get paid. Never play it. Yes. Actually, uh, Stephanie, if you can place your hand up, perfect. So this is the queen you want to follow. Don't follow the fours, all right? So where's the queen? 
get, build up your confidence again, but then this is the move. I'm telling you I'm doing the move. They never show you the move, but this is the move they do before they mix them up. So you're already following the wrong card before it begins. <laughs> It's a really, really strong moment. Really, really strong moment. I think if I was him, I would involve a little bit more mixing there so that it, you know, um, it's just a personal taste, but I, I understand that the vibe he's going for in this routine is one where there isn't a lot of mixing procedure, but you know, there's a bit of a, there's a, there's a debate to be had there, but I, I think I'll do it right. again. Wow. So what I do is I distract you here and you're not watching the queen anymore, right? And then I do the move like this, you don't know where to look. I mean, you can see how strong the reactions are from this routine, especially because so much of it is happening in their hands. I mean, it's just impossible uh, from their perspective that the cards could be jumping around like this when he's moving so slowly, moving so cleanly. The cards are staying separate from each other. Uh, it's a, it, I mean, this is why it's such a strong routine. Much to watch with, it, with the three cards. So I'm going to get rid of one. All right, so all you got to do is keep track of the queen. So, so where's the queen? Were you watching? Where did I put it? So you're saying it's not here is what you're saying. <laughs> Didn't I put a Fantastic four in my pocket? I think, here, oh, play, place your hand out, I think. It's a really nice moment, and for people who know, who are familiar with the method behind the routine, um, there's some really clever stuff, the methodological stuff that he's doing there. So I just think that's great. It's an awesome moment. <laughs> so even if you think it's a sure bet, don't take it. I, I am cheating. I have extra cards. If you win, it's because they wanted you to win. If you lose, it's because they wanted you to lose. They have perfect control over the game. They can do whatever they want. And everybody's a winner. All you need is six cards, three queens, and in my pocket, three fours, and you can take everyone's money. All right, even better here, we'll do this. Take, take your hand, place it right on top of the queens. Stephanie, you can Very put, nice. take your hand, place it right on top. Really gonna, this is going to no be a really strong <laughs> finale. Good. Come on. Yep, Excellent. getting everyone involved. Always a great way to end a routine. A little kind of like basketball huddle moment. Always going <laughs> and this is what I was talking about earlier, right? For people who know how this routine works, it would be bad if those cards got turned over too early. But he's making sure that doesn't happen because they think their job is to guard the cards. So they're going to guard the cards very, very, very closely. Uh, which, of course, is actually what Garrett wants. So it's a really well-constructed routine. <laughs> all right. Well, well all, all, all I have are the, uh, the the fours here to work with. That's right. Okay. Very nice. Just do the sneaky magic move. <laughs> Beautifully using the hands as cover. That was great. <laughs> Check it out. No way. All three at the same time. Oh. <laughs> Such a strong conclusion. Such a strong ending. Good, good. Welcome to the Twilight Zone. Oh All right. Absolutely fantastic uh, routine. Love it. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, he's, uh, he is, he's great. Absolutely love his, uh, love his work. Okay. Um, all right. Hopefully that was, uh, that was uh, fun. People got to uh, see me respond to some stuff there. Sorry, I, I missed, like, all of your chat stuff for the last, uh, you know, um, uh, for the last, I don't know how many minutes, because I was watching the video. Um, okay. Let's catch up on some messages. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, let's see if I can find anything. Elias Jones, do you plan on leaving neuroscience? Well, I sort of already have. Uh, Stand up Monty, yep, it's a great effect. Love it. Can you do a trick for us after reacting to this in the video? Sure, maybe I'll do a trick. Uh, do I belong to any magician fraternal orders? Uh, no, not really. Um, and let's see what people were saying during it. A lot of hmms. My other daughter is also single, beautiful, and just got accepted to the NC State Engineering as a junior. Wow. Central, really advertising your family members. Um, yeah, I don't know. DM me on Instagram. <laughs> Kidding. Sort of. Um, when you do a bridge demonstration for level 10 in your sleight of hand video, how confusing is the deal sequence, assuming there are crooked deals? I can't spot any of them. Um, there's a lot you have to keep track of at uh, at that point. 
uh, it's a lot to keep track of. So, all right, there we go. Realized I needed the uh, music on again. Uh, yeah, there's 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 a lot to keep track of. I don't want to say too much about that. Where can I learn about the cooler deck? Uh, books on gambling, sleight of hand. I'd say Darwin Ortiz's book, uh, Gambling Scams. You'll learn a lot. Also, C40's uh, DVD set, Gambling Protection series. I'd recommend those. Uh, and hmm, let's see. I believe I already mentioned that. Or do you just stack them and call it a day? Maybe. Good thinking. Okay. Can you do a trick for us after reacting to this? Uh, maybe. Um, uh, wow. Uh, love all the way from Saudi Arabia. Thank you. Um, and let's see. Use a flourish as a fake cut. You need to be punished. Yes. Correct. <laughs> That's one of the arguments advanced um, by Darwin Ortiz in... Um, uh, uh, in his essay on showing and hiding skill in the end of scams and fantasies with cards, which I would recommend. Uh, have I thought of a trick um, uh, uh, to do for Penn and Teller again? I've got a few, a few in mind, so, uh, you know, I'll keep thinking about it. Could I make a tutorial to stand up Monty? Uh, that is not my trick to make a tutorial of. It's not my routine. That's Garrett Thomas's routine. If you want to learn it, go buy it from him. He, he invented it, so so uh, you should you should support him and support his work. Um, the Ninja Gaming Bear. What do you feel about tricks that require setup versus tricks that require no setup? Uh, time and a place for both. Um, that shouldn't be the criteria for whether or not you do a trick. I mean, obviously, if you don't have time to set up the deck, well, you, you don't have time to set up the deck, but. Um, Pick tricks because they're strong and because you like them and because your audiences like them and find a way of making it work. Okay, uh, Josiah, how is my mentor? He's doing well. Um, since you told you were planning to go back, uh, no, already answered that question. What's my favorite food? Mm. Sushi, Thai cuisine, curry, not quite sure. Um, let's see, Felipe, I wanted to do Monty routines using a random deck usually they do not have two equal cards um if they've got identical jokers that works you can also use like the eight and nine of spades or the eight of spades and the eight of clubs sometimes that'll work but yeah it's better if you can get some duplicate cards um if i was to set up online shows what tricks would be good um hard to say hard to say not really sure so uh yeah uh, sorry, I don't have too much insight there. Um, Wobble, I've gotten into card cheating. Thank you for inspiring me. Please don't cheat in actual games. It's a really bad idea. It's dangerous. Um, practice cheating methods for fun, but don't um, do not do it for real. Bad idea. Um, I highly recommend against doing that. Have you done the trick Up the Ante by Martin Smith? No, I've, I'm not familiar with that trick. You'd have, to, you'd have to give me some more information. Don't know what it is. Uh, who is my mentor? Uh, primarily, I've been lucky enough to be mentored by uh, Jason England and Darwin Ortiz. Uh, what underrated trick is my favorite? Ooh, I'll have to think about that one. Do I edit my videos myself? Yes, I do, and it takes a really long time. Um, what would you recommend beginner magicians if they want to expand their knowledge on magic? I mean, if you want to learn card magic, Card College Volume 1 by Roberto Giobi, or my online course, coming soon, to a Patreon near you. Um, hardest trick I've ever done. Uh, maybe my castle closer. That one took a long time to learn. The closer in my castle act. Let's see. Uh, beginner's magic trick. The easy magic trick video on my channel. That's what I'd recommend starting with. How do I keep my audience's attention? Is it only by including in the trick? Are there other ways? And you have to be an engaging performer on stage. See you, Ed. Um... Yeah, uh, hope to, I'll talk to you. I'll give you a call maybe tonight or in a couple days. Um, definitely want to talk and chat over the next week uh, as much as much as we can. Take care, man. Um, all right, Fuji Prodigy. How did you shift from an ordinary grip to the dealer's grip? Um, just kept playing with the the grip and messing with it in my hands. Maybe I'll make a video um, uh, about that on my online course someday. Can you please perform the Gambler's Ballad? Um, I don't do, I mean, that, that, that that's Johnny Thompson's trick, I believe. I, I don't do the trick personally um, because, I mean, it's his effect, not mine. Um, I, I mean, of course, there are lots of routines I do that are by, they're published by the magicians, but that's not something I've ever done. Um, 
let's see. Hmm. Savage, uh, you'd have to point me to a video or a write-up of the trick. I'm, I'm really, I mean, that sounds like a great, um, a great, uh, um, you know, description of it, but I, I'd have to see it done or read it, or read the, read the trick. So if you can direct me to the source, that'd be great. Max Hastings says, bye, sir. Bye. Um, but yeah, good questions so far. Well, always good questions. Very interesting to uh, see what uh, what people ask, um, what the people are, you know, curious about. Uh, Hector Garcia says, greetings. Uh, greetings, Hector. Uh, Blabble is saying, yeah, I follow your footsteps. I only use them for demonstrations. Good, yes. Uh, learn the techniques for fun. Don't use them at the card table. Bad idea. Do I own a butterfly deck? I think I do own a butterfly deck. Um, St. McCall, are online shows easier because you can c control the camera angles? Well, they're easier in that sense, uh, but they're not easier in the sense, I mean, yeah, you know, I control the angles so I can like switch here um, if I want to, or I can switch here if I want to, but they're not easier in the sense that managing audience interaction is tough, finding material that works is tough, so. Um, let's see. Uh, been amazing to talk. Really looking forward to the lessons. Uh, great. Yep, I'll get back to you. Um, would I leave neuroscience if my magic career exploded? Uh, well, yeah, and I mean, I've kind of left neuroscience to some extent already, although I wouldn't say my magic career has exploded by any means. How long did it take you to become, to, to get to this level? Um, uh, I've been doing magic for almost a decade and a half, so a lot of practicing, but you certainly don't have to practice that long to become good at magic. Ezekiel, uh, love your stuff. Just wanted to say thanks for expanding my knowledge. Well, thanks. Glad you, uh, glad you like it. Uh, Max, magic robot. Like, uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Are you talking about the Ricky J automaton trick? Pretty cool. Do I have a preferred brand of cards? Bicycle. Uh, although I do love Tally Ho fan back designs. How many decks of cards do I have? Hundreds. Um, I go through them so much. What's the hardest thing you're practicing right now? I mean, I maintain my move, you know, moves like the center deal and riffle stacking. So probably that. Uh, do I know any knuckle-busting slights? Uh, well, yeah, center deal. Not very practical, but um, but fun to practice. Do I agree of Steve Forty's opinion on Erdnace and gambling sleight of hand? Asks Fuji, Fuji Prodigy. Um, yeah, I think he makes a really compelling argument in there. Uh, I mean, he's clearly an authority on this, and I think he presents very strong reasoning. Um, I mean, lots of people have different arguments about Erdnace, and we should evaluate them based on what's the evidence they provide and... What reasons do they provide? And I think Steve Forty has provided some very strong, strong arguments and strong reasons um, that have been, I think, more convincing to me than other other arguments that I've heard. But I don't know too much about that field of like all the different theories about him. So I, I'm definitely not an expert in the sense that I don't know. I'm not well versed in every possible theory that everyone has about it. Um, but I do think Steve Forty presented a good argument on it. Um, how much experience in magic should I have before I order the first Card College book? Uh, you basically don't need any experience. You can start with Card College Volume 1 from knowing absolutely nothing at all. Um, what is my favorite card sandwich effect? Um, not, um, uh, not sure. Oh, Max, react to Mario the Maker Magician. Ah, sorry. There's, um, uh, there's a lot, um, a lot going in chat. Hard for me to see all the messages. Um, yeah, I could do that. I make a video on scripting a trick out of an old book. Um, I don't really know what you mean by scripting a video out, out of an old book. I, I can make a video about scripting. Happy to do that. Central Scrutinizer, is neurolinguistic programming real? No. Um, there's a lot of research showing that it's BS. Um, hope that doesn't bother anyone. But no, it's, it's just fundamentally not. Um, and um, it... NLP kind of has the... It has all the characteristics of kind of a quasi-religious cult, um, so it is it is it is not real um, in in the sense of it works or anything. Um, I mean, people can believe in it, and the placebo effect is certainly quite strong. Um, but but in controlled experimental trials, no, there's there's no evidence that it works. Um, yeah, I may react to Mario the Maker Magician. I'll either do it this stream or or another stream. He's great. Um, 
Dong Wan, I enjoy demonstrating cheating moves in card games with friends, although extreme suspicion afterwards is inevitable. Yes, if you do demonstrate that you can cheat, uh, and then afterwards uh, your friends are suspicious, not too surprising. Um, okay, do I have any deck performance? Deck maintenance tips to open a new deck. Is it better to do magic with a new deck or used? Depends on the, uh, depends on the trick. Depends on the trick. Uh, Alright, let's see. First trick I learned. Uh, the trick that's called Easy Magic Trick on my channel. That's the first one I learned. What's your take on Piff the Magic Dragon? Oh, he's awesome. He's hilarious. Um, do I agree with hiding or showing off your skills as a magician? Depends on which trick I'm doing, and uh, it depends on your personality. Uh, what is the cost of decks in the United States? Uh, maybe one and a half, two dollars a deck if you buy them in bulk. Favorite color change? Um, probably the uh, Fade Away. I think it's called the Fade Away color change in Card College. Uh, it's this one. I didn't do that terribly well, but you get the idea. It really shows when I don't, you know, practice much for a week. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. That's what it's supposed to look like. Okay. Um, what wasn't helpful? Uh, let's see. You'll have to give me some more context on what you asked. Um, I clearly missed it. Yeah, too many messages going back for me to get to all of them. Okay, uh, let's see. Doo, 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 doo. Your ace production and 12 card production was so good it was so clean. Thank you, Wobble. Glad you enjoyed. That comes from 12 the Hard Way by Darwin Ortiz. What is NLP? Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> better things to do with your, with your time. Um... What is the name of your sick table false cut? I don't really know what you mean. Um, which one? Uh, my favorite one is this, which is sometimes called the Hustler's Triple Cut. Uh, this is this one I also like. It's in, I'll let you track this one down in Steve Forty's Gambling Protection. No, no, sorry. In um, Gambling Sleight of Hand in those books. Probably my favorite false cut. Do I have any ideas on performing close-up magic or sleight of hand magic for multiple spectators? It's always hard for me because I lose control over the angles. You have to keep in mind what your most extreme angles are. Who is the farthest person to your right? Who's farthest to the left? Who's highest up and who's lowest down? You need to pay attention to those boundaries and choreograph your tricks for those uh, for those boundaries. How much experience in magic should I have? Uh, oh no, already answered that one. Oh, about newer used decks. Yeah, I mean it just depends on the trick that you're that you're using 75 it, it, or the trick that you're doing. The deck you're going to use depends on the trick that you're going to do. In terms of maintenance, don't have dirty hands, um, don't bend up your cards too much, but once a deck gets beat up, open a new one. That's really my honest advice. Um, who's the best cheat in the world? Well, who's the best card handler in the world? Yeah, Steve Forty. Um, oh, 75. In terms of depending on the trick, so what I'm getting at there are certain tricks. Um, I mean, there are certain techniques where the cards need to be very slippery against each other. And there are certain um, uh, uh, other tricks um, uh, uh, that that benefit from the cards actually being stickier. It's hard to describe without going into like a huge amount of depth, but just understand that uh, if the cards need to slide a lot, then yeah, um, uh, new decks are better. But if uh, tackier cards are better, or then, then an old deck would be better. So that, that's really all I can say. Um, oh, that was someone else answering the question. Uh, Lin Linton, what was the magic scene like at Penn? Well, I ran the magic club. Uh, I don't know if there was a huge, vibrant magic scene or anything, but I ran a club and taught people magic, uh, and a magic-loving Yaley. Uh, my mom actually went to Yale, um, but uh, I didn't. Uh, someone did minimal research on NLP, and it seems redundant. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. See, best intermediate books. Ah, uh, well, that's really up to you. That's when it really becomes up to you. I mean, Card College Volumes 3 and 4, you could argue, are pretty intermediate in nature. Um, maybe 2 as well. So, those. Um, Entitled Gamer, I love your new setup. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, how many magic books do you have? Oh, God, I don't know. Hundreds? Uh, these aren't all of them behind me. Just some of them. Uh, yeah. Hopefully that got answered your question, 75. Um, yeah, that's really all there is to say. How much do I practice until a first gig? How to get one. Uh, explaining how to get one? Ugh, I, I mean, I really don't know if I'm the best person to answer that question. Um, uh, I guess you need to practice enough until you can do magic confidently and deceptively. 
You do not have to learn hard tricks. You can just learn easy magic. That's fine. Just be sure you can present it well and that you're confident and that it looks good when you do it. John Cosme, do I have an invisible deck? I'm sure I have one somewhere in some drawer. Uh, Chan, I've seen Ed Kwan's cast locked. I think you have you have uh, seen him in person. Opinion on him? Ed Kwan's one of my best friends. Uh, uh, one of my closest friends in life. We talk all the time. Uh, so he's terrible, and uh, no, uh, he's great. And how good he is frustrates me to no end. Um, yeah, no, Ed is Ed is fantastic. Uh, two magic people comparison. Uh, not quite sure what you mean by that. Justin Ching, what are your top three favorite gambling effects to perform? Um, let's see. Hmm. Uh, top three favorite gambling effects. Well, three card Monty. Uh, my castle closer called the man, the myth, and the legend. I mean, I have to say the tricks that I do probably are my favorites. If, if the tricks that were my favorites were not tricks that I did, then I would be doing the wrong tricks, I guess. Uh, there's another one that's not online that's a, some poker story stuff that uh, is one of my favorites, but I haven't put it online yet. I don't know if I ever will. We'll see. Okay, uh, also, by the way, thank you for the wonderful insights offered in your recent video on the neuroscience aspect of magic. Glad you enjoyed it. That was a lot of fun to make, but, man. Um, St. McCall, what do you do outside of magic? Um, what do I do outside of magic? Um, other hobbies is in, uh, and interests. Well, um, I like to read. I read a lot. Uh, I, um, I used to do a martial art called Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but then I got way too injured, so I don't do that anymore. I ski in the winters. I kind of off and on photographer, um, do, do it from time to time. I kind of have, like, magic's the main thing, and I have, like, another a number of other, like, very part-time occasional hobbies that I do. Um, I don't know if there's anything else I do as, not as seriously or consistently, but, um, you know, just a number of other things that are fun. Photography, reading, um, you know. I mean, video editing, you could argue, and video production stuff is a hobby, I guess, uh, but it really, you know, intercalates with magic, because YouTube Okay, um, what's better magic books or YouTube for a beginner magician? Depends. Problem with YouTube is your, well, it's a lot of the teaching on YouTube is so-so. Uh, Except mine. Mine's perfect in every way. Kidding. Um, well, shameless plug for my own videos and my online course coming soon. Gosh, I'm a broken record. Sorry. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, YouTube's free. Books will be a lot more precise depending on which books you get. I would recommend Card College Volume 1 as your book source and then add some video stuff on top of it. Random question, what is your eye prescription? I have no idea. I got these glasses a few years ago, so I, I really don't remember. Um, would you say that your knowledge of magic makes magic less enjoyable, or do you appreciate it in a different way? I just appreciate it in a different way. Um, I just do. Um, yeah, your, your, your experience of it just changes. Good night, Daniel, says Blobble. Uh, good night. Uh, Win Fidel, have you performed magic on Foolus? Yes, I have performed on Foolus. Um, for some reason, my video um, is not up right now, uh, even though I have total permission to post it. Um, There's some copyright issues that were erroneous, but I'm trying to get them solved. Um, however, um, uh, there is a video where I react to my own Foolus uh, clip, so um, check that out on my channel. Uh, video editing is more like a rocky push up a hill. Uh, yeah, that, it feels like that sometimes. What do I prefer to read? I mostly read nonfiction. Um, I just got into the habit about a year ago of reading every single night before I go to bed, and I don't think I've missed a night, uh, maybe one or two here and there, but, but I read all the time. It's great. First magic trick I learned was uh, the trick on my channel called Easy Magic Trick, or Learn an Easy Magic Trick. That is... Um, uh, that is uh, what I... That was probably the first trick I ever learned. Uh, big LOTR guy. Um, I mean, I like Lord of the Rings. I don't know if I'm a big, like, super fan or anything, but, um, yeah, uh, I, I do really like it. I've seen the movies a number of times. I have read the books. Um, yeah, I've not read The Silmarillion, although I should. Uh, BKA, uh, I aspire to reach your level, boss. Ten levels vids are nuts. Appreciate you. Well, thank you very much, BT, uh, BTA, and thanks so much for, or BKA, I should say. Thank you so much for the super chat. It's really kind of you. Um, okay. Max says, I accidentally typed Y and sent it as a message. Um, no worries. Amanda. Uh, hello, Amanda. Um, uh, yes, I do like Lord of the Rings. Um, can I do my uh, version of the ambitious uh, card? Um, I do it in my Finding the Aces video. Well, I do a version of it in that video. I don't really do ambitious card anymore. It's been, been a while. 
Um, setting aside yourself, was Ricky Jay the best cardist in the world, even including myself? Um, well, I think he probably had the best card manipulation show. Um, I mean, Steve Forty is probably the best card handler ever. Um, so it kind of depends what your criteria are. Um, yeah. Uh, Elio says, I like Lord of the Rings as well. What do I think about Copag 310? Never used him, so I really don't know. Um, can I please look up Korean? I kind of look like him. Um, okay, sure. Uh, do I practice flourishes like Bullet by Andre Zeke? Um, I've never really practiced much in the way of flourishes. Uh, Max asks, I was about to ask, have you ever found a use of the center deal other than a demonstration? Uh, not really. It's, um, it's mostly for demonstration. Central Scrutinizer, I have to go play the lottery. Wish me luck. Good luck. Um, and thanks for those family offerings. Um, you know, why not? <laughs> that was so funny. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, the center deal is totally useless aside from demonstrating it because the most impressive thing you can do is say, look, I can do a center deal. Um... Let's see, thoughts on Shin Lim. He's great, he really pioneered a new style that has really caught on, I think he's awesome. Um, when am I going to Vegas? Uh, hard to say, uh, hopefully sometime this year. Uh, but yeah, no, Shin, Shin Lim is great. Shin Lim is, is great, he's really, really creative. I think he's got a great show in Vegas with uh, Colin Cloud. Um, would I like to perform stage magic someday? Well, not like stage illusions. Not really interested in that. But I do, um, uh, you know, mentalism is fine, and that can be done on stage. What do I say or do when you get caught? Um, don't get caught. Um, <laughs> you, um, you need to have an out. You need to be able to do, do stuff, uh, well enough that that, that just doesn't happen. Um, Amanda says, deal a four card poker hand, give yourself the aces, and give other players kings and make them hit on the board. Wait, are we talking, are you ta talking about Omaha, Amanda? Or are you talking about Texas Hold'em? Uh, you gotta specify whether you're talking about Omaha or, or Texas Hold'em. Um, because that that definitely changes what I what I'll be doing. So um so yeah, give me uh you can um give me some some more specifics there. When you're saying hit on the board, do you mean like give them the kings on the board and then I get like the aces later or something? Is that kind of the, the deal that you're talking about? Think about that for a moment. Texas Hold'em. Okay, so you want Texas Hold'em, and you're saying that uh, you want to you want them to hit on the board, uh, and you want. Let's see if I can remember. To think about how to do this like this. I have to have it set this way, right? And then one, two, three. Okay. Yeah. All right. the right way of doing this oh oh that has to be the right way that has to be the right way doesn't it maybe we're gonna find out all right we're, we're gonna find out Let's see what happens here this may or may not work kings on the flop aces on the river and turn okay um i want to figure out the uh, yeah i could brute force this if if i wanted to but that would be boring um it's a good challenge Amanda. it's a good one um I could brute force it, but that would be boring. So I want to see if there are elegant ways of getting into this. So we'll find out. All right. Of course, I would do these on the table, you know. Four-handed. Um, let me think about this. Where are we at right now? Yeah. Hmm. 
All right, well, let's do this. This will be slightly more realistic. We burn, flop, and there's an ace in the king and a king on the flop. Burn, river, burn, uh, no, turn, and burn, river. Yeah. And then, um, kings, aces. Because then it's realistic for me to have stayed in, right? Now, obviously, this is a hyper unrealistic hand. But, um, yeah. All right. That worked. Let's, let's do this for real now. Make this look good. Okay. Kings, aces. So you would need to cull these, obviously. Um, they start like this. It's a good challenge, Amanda. Uh, I like this one. All right, here goes. So, shuffle, shuffle, strip cut, yeah, all right, again, this is, you know, sloppy, but cut. Here goes. Okay. Burn. Flop. Burn. River. Burn. Turn. And so we've got king ace in the flop and then king ace again. And kings to this player and pocket aces to me. There's the demo. So let me know if that was satisfying, uh, that satisfied your request, Amanda. It's a good sequence, actually. I, kinda, I like this one. I'm practice this a little bit more. Figure out the right sequence for this. It's only an eight card stock, so it's like that's doable on top, right? I also do it on the bottom, though. Mm. Yeah, and then do a cut. Ah, I like that one more. I like that more. Yeah. That's gonna be better. That's gonna be better. Okay. Try this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be way better. Okay, here we go. Yeah, but Amanda, it was a little sloppy that time, so. Here's the King Ace block. Which gets, uh cut into the deck. So, yeah. Shuffle. Shuffle. Running cut. Uh, I can do this. Shuffle. Square. the sequence. There we go. Flop. Turn. Wait, did I miss on the river? What's going on? I must have missed somewhere. Hello. Fix it. There we go. And uh, kings. Aces. All right. We have our sequence officially have the sequence worked out. Now I have to make it look good. So, here we go. Four kings, four aces. Oh, I like this. I like this one. Four kings, four aces. And these go on top. Get cut into the deck. All right. Here's the shuffle sequence. Riffle, riffle, trip cut, riffle, and cut. There we go.
What's going on on this last one? How could that be next to it? Oh, I must be missing on that. Oh well. You get the idea. There we go. All right, we have a sequence. We have it. Cool. Thank you, Amanda. I, I really appreciate the uh, suggestion here. I think that's a really fun sequence that I got to. Uh, um, I got to. Uh, I got to mess with that. Hmm. Cool. If anyone else has poker sequence suggestions, uh, feel free to ask. Cause that's yeah, that, that one worked. I keep missing at the very end though, which is annoying. So gotta mess with that. Oh, I'm gonna make a short little video out of this. Sweet. All right. Yeah. So shuffle. Shuffle, cut, no, nah, it's the cut there, sorry. That has to work. That has to work. Here we go. Kings, aces. There we go. Hit it that time. Good. So, aces for me, wins for him. It's a fun sequence. Yeah. All right. Took a little time to work out the efficient way of doing it, right? But um, I uh, like that. Obviously not realistic for a game, but, but it's a pretty cool demo. What are the false cuts that you're frequently... Um, uh, that, what are the false cuts you frequently use in call? Where did you learn them? Um, mainly like Steve Forty's gambling protection series, the, um, the, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, his books, Gambling Sleight of Hand, Jason England's Foundation series, a couple other places. Backdoor, straight flush against quads. So that means three of the straight flush cards have to end up on the board. The other guy has to get qua uh, uh, pocket, what you know, I don't know, whatever. And then I have to get the other two cards to straight flush, right? Hmm, is that doable? It means I have to control the entire flop. Uh, I can't just miss, I can't have that one random card in there. Otherwise, that would be doable. All right. Hmm. Uh, James, yes, I'm going to do some YouTube shorts. Um, Anand Dragon, I'm doing well, thanks. Any thoughts on Jack Carpenter? Oh, he's great. He's a big inspiration for me. Uh, Martin Nash, you know, one of the old, old greats. Uh, definitely a big inspiration. Favorite false riddle shuffle and cut. Okay. Hmm. All right, so straight flush versus quads. Again, very unrealistic. Right, back to means straight flush comes in the turn in the river. Okay. Calvin, yes, I'm a, I'm a paid working magician. Um, math class coming. Any ideas for tricks for how to vanish so I don't have to attend? Unfortunately, um, yeah. Uh, sorry. Can't help you there. Uh, all right, let me think about this. So we need a straight flush. Let's say um, something like, uh, I don't know, eight, nine, uh, let's see, six, we need a 10, six, seven, we need a seven. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, straight flush. Do you have any clue how card and number is done? I do many versions of it, so I guess, yeah. Do you like Divern and Percy Diaconus? I mean, how could you not? Uh, yeah. Of course. Um, okay. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten aces. Okay. Gotta think about this. Alright, 
Hector Garcia. Can I do the ultra move? I learned it at one point, but I don't I haven't done it in a long time. I don't know if I ever did it all that well. Okay. Actually, it should be in the other one. First trick I ever learned, um, I would uh, check out my video on my channel called Learn an Easy Magic Trick. That is the first trick I ever learned. Okay. Think about this for a moment. It's gonna be a four-handed game. Elias, is magic good for getting women? No, it's not. Don't use it to get women. That's kind of, yeah, that's a little weird. Don't, just be a person. Um, Hector, uh, not really a move I do anymore. Sorry. Um, okay. Think about what this would look like. John Cosme, can you demonstrate Leonard Green's act when he dealt five good hands? Um, uh, I mean, sort of, but, but I'd have to re, you know, kind of get that sequence set up. Second trick you've ever learned. <laughs> Didn't see that question coming. Okay, that's pretty good. Probably one of the first tricks in Card College. I really don't remember. Um, okay. Uh, hi from India. Hello. Um, do you practice no matter what? I practice when I feel like practicing. Um, how good is your two-card stock for a five-handed game? Are you talking about um, overhand shuffle or riffle shuffle? Okay, green. like a Minecraft player, so I don't, um, I, uh, don't know, person looks like Grant. Oh, yeah, I guess we look somewhat similar, especially with the glasses and the sweater. I can see it. Okay, best magic book I've ever read, Designing Miracles by Darwin Ortiz for kind of thinking about it, uh, and for the actual sleight of hand. I mean, I'm a big fan of card college. Okay, so we're thinking about this, this straight flush thing. Um, only want one on the flop. I think the setup has to be this. Right? Do, 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 do. Right. Yeah. That is going to be the challenge. Is that second card on the flop. That's going to be the uh, pain in the ass. Okay. Let's see if we can figure this out. Who was it who suggested the backdoor straight flush thing against quads? Whoever that was, just let me know in chat. All right, so. Um, yeah, so this is the sequence. The alternating straight flush with aces is uh, the setup. Okay. Yeah, this gets cut into the deck. Magicians, do I think are better than Aldo? Oh god, I don't know if I can really answer the question. Uh, Aldo was great. Okay, shuffle. Uh, shuffle. Cut. scrutinizer is back. Hope the uh, lottery went well. Okay. Let's see if this worked. Wait. Ah, I'm stupid. Hold on. <laughs> I just gave the other guy. <laughs> well, okay, let's do it for four players. Let's say I'm the dealer. Alright. <laughs> Wouldn't have been stacked to me. Oh well. Okay. Burn. Um, yeah, see, this is the problem, is this spot right here. Nope, yeah, see, that's the problem, is you end up with too many of them. For a moment. 
I could do it without the barrel. Seven, eight. Hope this isn't boring for people. Because uh, me, uh, I try to figure out how to do these riffle stacking challenges that people uh, suggest. Okay. Something like this. Uh, yeah, so these would come last, right? Three shuffle for the cut, right? So I would just need to have one, two, one, two, and then uh, burn one, two, three, burn one. Yeah. So I need a card here. Ugh, under seven. Yuck. And I need a card there, right? Seven and under four. Can I do that? I hope so. Yeah. Okay. Seven and under four. One under seven, one under four, two under two, two on top. Okay. Here we go. All right, Max, I'll get to that in a moment. Under seven, under four. Shuffle, shuffle, uh, strip cut, under two, under two, I get quads, and I get the six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that's the um, yeah, that's the back for a straight flush. Is that what you were looking for? Whoever asked for that, um, hopefully that was satisfactory. I'll do it again. Hopefully, slightly smoother. Uh, okay. Yeah, that sort of worked. <laughs> well, yeah, these are kind of mentally taxing puzzles. All right, here we go. Aces and these get interpolated like this. Okay, here we go. No. All right, here we go. Can I hit that or not? Really weird first stack. The very first shuffle is really weird. That's why I keep missing. Been here since 100 subs. Oh wow, thank you. Okay. Yeah, it's just such such a weird first shuffle. There's got to be a better way around that. Um. Oh, you were saying the ace would be started as part of the straight flush. Oh. Yeah, that's way easier. Oh, it's way easier. Thank you. I'm just dumb, that's all. Thank you, thank you. Ah, okay. Well, I can get a royal flush then, right? Yeah. Oh, this is way easier. Thank you. I'm, I was making this overly complicated. I was making this way overly complicated. 
Have you practiced this before? Or am I just figuring them out? I mean, I've practiced the sleight of hand, but I'm figuring out the sequence uh, on the fly. I'm just people are telling me to try stuff, and I'm just seeing if I can work out a way of doing it. Okay. Thank you for the uh, tip there. I was just me being dumb. Elias Jones, do I have any interesting or unique decks? Uh, not really, to be honest. Maybe these. They're just a gift from a friend. Okay. All right. Um. That queen king, which I need to get, and the ace has to be on on the board. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, this is gonna be way easier. Oh, this will just be similar to the first one. Okay, here goes. Let's see if I can do it. So yeah, these eight cards, aces, and the other four cards of a royal flush of spades. Shuffle, shuffle. Shuffle, shuffle, cut, shuffle, and then, you know, your partner. But did I forget something? There we go. Okay, there we go. And a cut. Here we go. Alright, let's see if this works. Ace is here, and I've got the 10 jack of spades. Burn, flop. Ace for him, and for me, burn, turn, ace for him, burn, river. Okay. So, I don't know if that's, I mean, I guess technically the what you were asking for would have been this, but, I mean, I don't know, I think this is fine. Um, hopefully that's relatively sad. I mean, again, I could make it come out like that, but it's a little cleaner if I can do it this way. Um, yeah, so that, that, that works. That works. All it is a real shuffle is a control shuffle. Um, <laughs> yes, that is indeed my script from one of my videos. Sounds like you've learned it. Okay. Alright, yeah, hopefully that, that, that got it done for you. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun to figure out. Um, I mean, again, it didn't look great, but I was able to at least mechanically, you know, get through it. So, there's something. <laughs> I don't know what that's worth. Uh, people are asking me to do a pharaoh shuffle. Sure, I'll do a pharaoh shuffle. I'm not going to teach it here because it would take too much time, but uh, at least do it for you. called pocket aces they say three of the kind is all you need to get the money but just to be sure <laughs> okay people are uh, really really after my script here um yeah so it's pretty funny uh can you play with Yu-Gi-Oh cards again yeah maybe I'll do, do something like that in the future sure Those the Avenger cards. Uh, no, no, these are just Tally Ho fan back cards. Um, I didn't even know the Avenger cards were a thing. Yeah, I didn't know that, that existed. Daniel, I use your script so many times. It's pretty funny. Yeah, I, I get it gets kind of repetitive to be honest. <sighs> John Cosby says, really love your streams. Hope you do it more often. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let me do another 
Pharaoh Shuffle for people that were asking. Alright. Max, satisfied? Hopefully that was satisfactory. Um, do a collab with Spidey. Yeah, that'd be really cool. That'd be really cool. Uh, what deck do I recommend? Bicycle cards. Standard bicycle cards. <laughs> yeah, Walter Irving Scott. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But Max, I think I, I, I should have satisfied your request from earlier. Let me know if I did or not. Um, are the cards you usually use different from regular playing cards? Nope, they're just normal cards. PR, when am I hitting the road again? No idea. Uh, hi Daniel, are you back in the Bay Area or still at college? Uh, I'm, in, I'm in California again and I'm in the Bay Area again. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I know, I know Max. <sighs> yeah, for the card ASMR and chill. Keep on sliding. What is the best card to use for, use for Pharaoh? Just a new deck of bicycle cards. New deck of bicycle cards will, will do the trick. Um, you know, that should be enough. Uh, Central Scrutinizer. Hope that was satisfying. All right, what was the first thing you bought from a magic shop? Uh, Card College Volume 1, I think. Someone says you're watching from Italy at 2.30 a.m. Wow, I appreciate the dedication. Very kind of you. Max, I think you'll find the number of people now currently asking for the same thing rather humorous. <laughs> uh, hey, you on Daniel's stream. What's up? Hi. What's up? Any tips on minimizing finger movements in the bottom deal? Uh, yes, the Pharaoh. Um, <laughs> screen kept opening and closing. <laughs> um, gold seals. Yeah, they're nice cards. I find I don't really need them, but, but they're nice cards. Thirds asks Chan. Yeah, sure. Why not? Hello from Brazil. Wow, very international audience. I'm quite impressed. Okay. There's the other uh, Ace of Clubs. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, Justin is saying your favorite tricks. Uh, how to do... Or do, oh, ones that uh, come out of a totally clean inventory deck. Do I have thoughts? Uh, I like those too. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, no, I, I know what you mean, Max. I know what you mean. Hopefully they look good. Um, okay. So someone had asked about uh, thirds. A third. It's hard to do these really consecutively. But, uh, missed on that one. Let's try it again. It's good at this angle. This is the version that, nope, oh, I think I missed on that one. This is the, uh, uh version that, uh, Steve40 does in the, uh, 52 segment of, um, Gambling Protection Series. There we go. Eh, it's okay. I haven't practiced it in too long. Uh, you can do them with strikes, too, if you want to. I don't really do them with strikes that often, but, um, you know, you can. Hey, I keep trying to do a fair shuffle, but I always cut too much or too little. Uh, it's a visual comparison. You gotta take it, you gotta take it, uh, slowly and really visually compare the two halves. And remember, you're not trying to cut 26. Um, you're trying to learn what, how to cut. Rachel asked, how did you get so good? Oh, well, thank you. Um, I've just practiced a lot, and I try to practice thoughtfully um, and, and analyze moves and try to analyze them systematically uh, to find ways of improving them mechanically. That's, that's important. So, anyway, those are thirds, if you were wondering. 
They all take a little bit of get ready though. So they're not practical. They're kind of just for fun. Here's one, uh, here's face up. That's a third. Hopefully that is satisfying. Calvin, how long did it take you to learn a clean in undetectable pass? I don't know if I can do one, um, so maybe I'm still learning. Can I give us an original quote? Can you give us an original quote now that you're one of the, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what you quite mean by original quote, Elio. Don't know if you've been asked, but do you know any uh, fairly simple false, I assume you mean false cuts. Probably my favorite is this on the table. Um, that's my favorite one on the table is what I'd say. Oh, mouse in mouse a bucket. Oh, shuffle, shuffle. Um, uh, shuffles start to get pretty complicated. Um, what do I mean I'm not trying to cut to 26? In other words, you're not trying to learn what 26 cards looks like. You're trying to learn what half of any group of cards looks like. You're just trying to learn what half and half looks like. All right, Central, enjoy Valheim. I, I played a little bit of it, but but barely any. Barely any. So, um, yeah, I've, been, I've, I've heard it's good, though. I've heard it's a really good game. Okay, yeah, there's my... Here's my quote. Congrats. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing with all estimation. You're not learning what 17 or 19 or 30 cards looks like. You're learning what it, what, what that many cards looks like relative to the number of cards in the other pile. It's always a visual comparison. That's uh, something straight out of card college. Um, okay. Uh, fan flourishes. Sure. Uh, the pad I use, it's made by this guy named Patrick Przeski, um, and he makes great mats. What is unique about Richard Turner's second deal? Uh, he uses a different technique called the sweep second. It's, it's actually something really only he does, and it's pretty remarkable. Um, hello, I just started again magic stuff after five years. What basics do I need to learn to help me later? Um, Card College Volume 1, that's what I'd recommend. Or my online course, coming soon, to a Patreon near you. Hopefully that uh, answers your question. Do you know of any books or anything to learn these tricks? Card College Volume 1. Or if you like videos, uh, you know the answer. Uh, oh, thanks. Glad you, uh, glad you liked the second deal. You can do a few more of them. To a club. So these are some seconds. I mean, yeah, Elio, but it's not an original quote. I mean, you'll find some something very similar in Card College. In the estimation. Chapter 43, I think. Maybe 44. I don't quite remember. These are seconds. All right. Do a few push-offs. It's my approach to scripting routines. Well, I feel like you don't write a script so much as you discover a script in the sense that um, you, uh, I mean, it's, it can be difficult to learn to write in exactly the same way uh, that you, uh, it can be difficult to write in exactly the same way that you speak. So instead, try to decide roughly what you're going to say, and then um, uh, after you've sort of decided approximately what you're going to say, you can, um, you know, do the routine a number, you know, five, ten times. And after you've done it a number of times, you'll kind of settle on a similar way of phrasing things. And um, uh, after you've done that, you can then record yourself doing the routine and then just write down whatever you've said after, you know, five or ten performances. And then that's your script. And then you can, you know, tweak it and make changes. But I find that's a lot more fun and a lot more accurate than just trying to memorize it, like write it and memorize it, because it can be very hard to write in the same way that you, um, it can be very difficult to write in the same way that you, uh, that you speak, but it's much easier to just speak and then write down whatever it is you say. So, so in other words, you're kind of discovering the script. Of course, some parts of it you may still actually write, uh, but you know, the more you can discover the script, the better. Do I mess around with coins at all? Not anymore. Used to when I was younger, but uh, not not much anymore. Uh, Justin, I'm 
clumsy, and you said you're clumsy, can I learn a second deal, or is it too late? Never too late. It's never too late. You just need the proper tools to learn. Um, uh, I'd recommend Jason England's Foundations Siri and uh, Expert at the Card Table. What is the best thing to do to cover, to hide a second deal? Uh, have your partner at the table distract uh, whoever would be watching by having them look elsewhere so they're not even looking anywhere near the deck of cards. By far the best way. Um, so that's what I would, uh, that's what I'd recommend. I, I mean, that's how, that's how cheating actually happens. It's, it's, you know, if they're looking at the cards to the point where your technique matters, you've already made lots of mistakes if that's ever happening. So people should really never be scrutinizing the cards much. That, that, I guess that's what I would say. I don't know if that's helpful or not. Gotta go now, but what a fantastic stream. Fabulous and informative entertainment. Thanks. Glad you uh, glad you liked it. Glad you enjoyed it. It's really a good time. I'll, I'll go for a little bit more, and I'm going to have to sign off relatively soon. It's been, gosh, two and a half hours already. How does Richard Turner see and recognize cards? He doesn't. Um, he, he doesn't know what they are. Anyone ever done a trick for me not knowing as I was a magician? Probably. Yeah. Probably has happened. Do I have a video on the second deal? Uh, not yet, Rachel, but maybe I will uh, make one on my online course. How's school going? Uh, school, I'm done with school. I, um, I graduated last year, May of 2020. Weird, time to graduate. Uh, Stanley, is it a good idea to begin learning sleight of hand from S.W. Rudnace? Uh, no, um, it's not a good beginner source. Uh, I would recommend Card College, Volume 1, or my online course, coming soon to a Patreon near you. Alright, um, dry hands make second and bottoms really, uh, difficult. Yes, they make them difficult for me, too. Uh, uh, my hands are so dry naturally that if I don't moisturize them, I can barely deal the top card, let alone the second one. So, I would, uh, highly recommend, um you know, finding some hand lotion that works for you. Good resources for second and bottom deals. Yes, Jason England's Foundation Series, Expert at the Card Table. Um, uh, that's what I would recommend. You're going to see your own signature card soon. Maybe I'll make my own cards someday. That'd be kind of cool. That'd be kind of fun. So, I don't know. Sometime, potentially. Do I practice cardistry just for fun? No. Will I link you to my Patreon? Yes, I will at some point once the online course is up and uh, ready to go. I'll let you know whenever that is. So you need a compilation of all your online course plugs. Yeah, exactly. There will be there will be many. So many. <laughs> well, I just figure I should start talking about it now. Um... You know, because not everyone will see every video. Hey, Daniel, before you go, I want to say you're doing a great job. Oh, thank you so much, Luca. And thanks for the uh, suggestions of uh, sequences to, to do. Those were fun. Those were fun to practice. All right, if you have any final questions, now's the time. I think I'm going to call the stream in just a few minutes. Um, if you've got some questions, uh, have at it. So, up to you. What is that cut? Is that a control if you're going to teach it? Well, there's something called the double undercut. Which I'm not going to teach it here. I will teach it on my online course. But uh, lucky card is the Ten of Hearts. So it's like this. Do you think children, when compared to adults, have better reaction to card tricks? Depends how young. Um, too young, they don't really understand what's going on, or they think magic is like real, um, <laughs> and then kind of hard for it to register. Um, yeah, kind of depends on the trick. What do you think about your college experience, considering it was, you have a completely irrelevant job? <laughs> do you think it was worth it? Yeah, I learned a lot from it, and that's where all the neuroscience angle came from, and, you know, got a lot out of it. Worth it for me. What am I going to eat after the stream? I have no idea. Absolutely no idea, but definitely something, because I'm getting quite hungry. Amazing stream, thanks so much, Elio. Oh, thank you, thank you so much, Elio. Glad you, uh, glad you enjoyed. Thought it was fun, and uh, hope this was a fun Sunday afternoon activity. Uh, where can we find your online course? Um, it'll be up soon. I'll post about it on my channel. It'll be on Patreon.
Um, did you buy the green mat? Uh, yes. Um, Patrick Przeski. Just look in the description of any of my videos, even this one, and you'll find uh, you'll find the link. Um, I may teach some past-related stuff on my online course. Uh, not sure yet. It'll it'll be farther along. So yeah. Okay. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, this was really fun. Uh, I hope you all had a good time. Uh, and I will probably do some more of these. Maybe I'll do one next week or something. I don't really know yet. Um, 